Okay, setting up meeting for Facebook Live. <laughs> when I see it come up here as well. Okay, we should be live now. Okay, we are live, I think. Yeah, yeah, I can see you there. Okay, fantastic. There's going to be a delay on it, isn't there? There will be a little bit of a delay. So don't worry about that. We'll, we'll um, just focus on this one, basically. Yeah. We'll try and deal with that. Yeah, we'll give it a couple of minutes for people to join. And um, yeah, okay. okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Sean's joined. Hey, Sean. Let's see for Sean Whitaker. Yeah. Cool. Can you see stuff before me, Nish? I don't. I haven't seen anyone join yet. Oh, oh yeah. I, I look at it a different view, Al. So when I uh, I change the view so I can see names as they come up. Oh right, yeah, that's what it is. Hi, Sean. Sifu Sean from Iron Ox Mantis. Welcome. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, yeah, it's, it's it's weird because it's. Hmm. So the place that you're in now, this is is this where you you teach, um, Spencer? Is this your 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 or is this your? Yeah, this, your is, this is this is for our studio on this side. So um, not so much teaching. I haven't been teaching there for quite a while, but um, this is where this I've spent. Train. So well, where the magic happens. Well, where the magic happens. Yeah, yeah. Is this, did you did you build this yourself? Is this like a a, a, a place you built yeah. specifically? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, there's a purpose built thing that I done when we when we had the academy actually when we had to close all that down. We had nowhere else we could I could do anything and I had everything in the house. So yeah, um, it's just something that I kind of I, I see a, a vision of what I wanted to do. Um, and when it all come over, it, as you can imagine, it's all in flat packs, so it was a, a pretty big job to put it up. But yeah. My, my son himself then was a young kid, so he was helping out, like, uh, being a foreman and stuff. So, yeah, it went up pretty quick, to be fair. It, I just I left it a long time to settle in before it sort of yeah. gets ready and gets a roof on and all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty pristine at the minute because I've, I've done a little bit of a refurb on it. But. Yeah, I saw, and it looks like a really nice space. It looks lovely. Yes, yeah, it's quite small, three meters by three meters. So yeah. It's it's not a massive space, um, but there's different areas that you can kind of go into. Oh yeah, which is quite, yeah. Cool. All good though. man here. Okay. Snack as you watch yourself. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's about what's it? A thirty second delay on the old Facebook? Something like that. Yeah, it's about a thirty yeah. second delay. Yeah. yeah, if you look at yourself on Facebook, you 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 wonder why you're waving your arms when you're not waving yeah. your arms. <laughs> 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 oh, I like that when I'm training. Alex. I don't know. <laughs> what I do is I just wave my arms. For this one, I I just pause the video and then um just see the the questions that come up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Where's your vodka today? No vodka? Gin? Was it gin? Gin, yes. yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's well, actually right now I've got one here. Well, a small one. A cup of oh, tea first uh -huh. before I kind of jump into the gin a bit later. <laughs> mm. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. We'll give it a, a couple of minutes just so we get uh, a couple of numbers and then we'll make a start. Excellent. Evening, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, Hi, Stephen. Hi, Riley. Mark. There's a few. Yeah, we've got a few on there now. So Twelve or so. Yeah, <laughs> Let's kick off at, at ten past now. Yeah. Cool. Clock watching now. <laughs> Clock watching. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have done a lot of interviews now, isn't it? Quite a lot. 
Yeah, we've done so, we've done a fair few, and we've got a few more lined up, and I'm still um, sending out invites to more to to line them up. So through July and August, we'll yeah. be yeah doing Busy. more. I think. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, and we're, yeah. We're, we're, we're really broadening the, the, the range as well. So um, anything yeah. related to, 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 to martial arts, whether it's the, like next, uh, the week after next, we've got a friend of ours who, who specializes in acupuncture and herbs, um, which yeah. I think is a great, a great thing to talk about. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah but could we want to talk to him about kind of um, stuff that he's come across with in, regarding injuries and he, he practices acupuncture and herbs. So it'll be, a, a, I think, a, a point of interest. He does know much about Dit but um, yeah. the herbal side and the treatments that he's given, it will be yeah. interesting. And he trains a lot of martial arts and a lot of, uh, across a broad range. So yeah. it's interesting to, it would be interesting for, uh, to hear the sort of injuries that uh, everyone sort of gets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure with, I'm sure with, uh, like with Madness, there's, there are injuries that happen with the shoulder and the elbow. And big ones, yeah, wrists, a bit, wrists, yes. that. and I'm sure with Wing Chun there are certain injuries that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's interesting to hear about different styles and where the injuries come, you know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, yes, must be. It's quite crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's let's, let's okay. pick up. Yeah. Ready? Okay. Let's go. Um, oh, sure. Just start with a brief uh, intro. Um, the Chun Brothers we've got here to um, this week. Welcome, guys. Thanks for doing yeah, this. Yeah. We've got Barry, Barry Lewis and Spencer Devine, yeah. Sifu's of the, uh, under late master Sifu Joseph Mann. Um, he was the seventh student and disciple of Li Xing, who in turn was a private student of the, um, you've said infamous Yip Man in Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah, previously, Barry had been training and teaching Wing Chun since the mid seventies. And Spencer was an avid karate kid in the mid 1980s, and both were searching for their next martial experience. Yes, Matt. Um, <laughs> training at their teacher's Junmo school in North London included vast amounts of equipment and weaponry practices, as this was Man Sifu's speciality. Oh, cool. As early students, they were taught how to perform, including uh, influenced by their teacher's childhood surrounded by Canton Opera. They both had an unforgettable journey into the core and culture of the system, being by their Sifu side for almost 10 years before he sent them out into the public domain to start their own clubs and personal development. Wow. Uh, now, three years after their teacher's unexpected passing, Barry and Spencer returned to training in North London and plan new initiatives in tribute of their Wing Chun Sifu. Ah, oh, fantastic. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Really thank you, thank you. Thanks for having us as well. Yeah, yeah really good. So, um, I was saying to I was saying to the to to, to both Sifus, I I I never had the the, the pleasure of, of meeting your Sifu, but we connected on Facebook for a very long time, and I always always watch his videos and watch his yeah. training, and I, he just came across yeah. as such a nice guy, such a character, um, and his approach yeah. and the way he taught, it, it looked really good. I, I always thought to myself, oh, I, I do want to go down one day and meet him, but yeah. it was doing some stuff. He was inviting yeah. quite a lot of people down, but we was just the shock when he went on Facebook and, and everything was out there as as everybody else, I think. Yeah. yeah. It was quite, it was quite uh, an experience, you would say, just to see him putting clips out from the classes that he was running at the time. So, well, it was great. It was great. Great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's how I learned about uh, uh, Jun, the, the Junmo uh, Wing Chun, you know, just because I saw him and then he just said, oh, mm. be my friend. I said, who's that? Like, okay. And then messaged him. He said, yeah, I you know I teach in North London. I said, oh, what? And then, yeah, it just, so it was great <laughs> to see to learn about yeah. that. So yeah. let's yeah. start. Let's start at the beginning. Um, uh, and yeah, and cool. I'll, I'll give this one to you, Barry, first. Uh, so okay. tell us a yeah. bit about you, about your training history and uh, where you started yeah. and, and how you sure. ended up, how you ended up with, uh, with uh, Sifu, Sifu right. Joseph Munn. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll go back to sort of mid late seventies um, when I first started. Started with a Sifu called Jay Pang, who learned his Wing Chun from his brother, Paul Pang. Uh, I think they were connected to Li Xing as well as Lerman Ting. Uh, did that to start off with, there for a little while. 
he was quite an interesting character. He was like the old 70s masters with big flares and open t-shirt, medallion, all that sort of stuff. Was that in London? Quite, was that London, Barry? Yeah, yeah, that was in Hornsey. No way. Wow. How, how did you even yeah. find out? Yeah, how did you... My, a friend of mine, well, back in the days of Warriors 2 and those kind of films, yeah, I was always a hands man, and some of my friends were legs men, so we used to have little... Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Northern and Southern, yeah. Northern and Southern. Yeah, exactly. So it was always about a school in... It's actually in the... Um, what do you call it? The um, uh, sports place down there, and then we went down there, and we joined, all right, and he stayed for one lesson, and I just stayed. We just really loved it from there. It was great. It was great. Um, but he, as I said, he was quite a character, quite a charismatic way he's doing his thing. And then from there, when I moved on from there, I went to Stephen Chan. And I was with him for a little while. Uh, again, I, I liked Stephen Chan because he reminded me of my film hero, T. Long. Mm. You know, T. Long, so that was great as well. Uh, he had a little small room, a bit similar to what we have here at Fire Studios. Uh, and you know, it's all Chi Sao stuff based and things like that. And then he got into his book, Nucleus Swim Chun. So he spent more, more time away. So again, I moved on and I was a bit more disciplined. So I ended up with uh, Simon Lau. And he, he again is quite a disciplined way he taught his classes. Very, very um, up and down training, very, very stiff training. Um, and it was great. I really loved it because I remember going into his office. And saying to him, well, can I watch a class? And he just was doodling down there and just said, no. And I, said, <laughs> no. I loved it. I thought, yeah, this is great. Yeah, you know, so in you went to the class and it was, in them days, classes were like 30, 40 people, one class every day. And uh, you have to go around the back of the hall of the 30 classes and then all in grey uniforms. And you just do what everyone's doing. And the instructors would come in in their black Kung Fu bottoms, white T-shirts. And, it, you know, it was just, it was like the films, literally. Yeah. Uh, it was great. And then that went for a little while, and then uh, up to when he did Way of the Warrior. And Way of the Warrior, obviously, the explosion happened. A lot of people got involved in the martial yeah. arts. Remember Way of the Warrior, James? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So from there, uh, it kept 10 to three times a week, as opposed to five times a week, the classes, and twice, two different classes, all sorts of stuff. So it was changed. And then from there, I moved on to another Sifu, uh, Sifu Waipo Tang. He had experience over in um, China with the uh, Uchoi Kip the lineage. And uh, he's quite photogenic, but he also mixed his Wing Chun with a bit of Thai boxing. Yeah, as I remember. Well. So I've seen, I've seen stuff. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of his training was more sparring and uh, bag training, that sort of stuff. Uh, but it is great as well. And then from there, uh, once that uh, happened, I think inspired by Wing Chun roughly when he did that video, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Um, yeah, I've got it. Oh, yeah, you, oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm in there. Yes, yeah. I, bought, <laughs> I, like, yes, I looked. I yeah. think this was um, this was probably around the late nineties that I heard about him. That's all right. And then um, that's right. yeah. I heard about him through uh, through because you know North London. There was a lot of Wing Chun in North London, and one of my friends mentioned yeah. it, and um, I um, I thought, okay, let me have a look, and I and I bought the VHS of a uh, of a. Uh, of that video and I've still oh, got it right. somewhere. So yeah, but I, I, looked <laughs> it, I thought, I, thought I, I like his, I like the way he's doing that. It looks very, um, yeah. looks very it's, aggressive, it's quite, looks very kind of no nonsense. Yeah. And it looked like it had that's that. Yeah. 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 Which was, which was great. It was great to film that stuff. It was, it was good fun in Sweden. We did all the filming. Uh, but anyway, from there, then I went on to uh, looking for another seafood at that point. Um, and uh, there was a guy in Brixton that I went down and heard about. And he was um, Joseph's man. Mm. Uh, met him. By that time, of course, I was an instructor under Wiper, as well as Simon Lau. Um, so I thought, I, you know, I was pretty decent, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but when I met Joe now, of course, he just blew my mind. His knowledge, his, um, the way he just delivered his venture was just immense. And I thought, wow, I've got to have some of this. And then uh, fortunately for, for, for me, he... Um, well, invite exactly. us around to his place, and then yeah. that was it. We became indoor students, and from there, uh, the dream began again. Yeah, yeah it was great. So that's Barry, basically you, my you, history. Yeah, you, you, from what it sounds like, you've been doing Wing Chun since the seventies up ah. until now. Like, yes, I was about I'm three a, or four years old when I started. Yeah, yeah. Wing Chun period. <laughs> I've done no other yeah. system. Just Wing Chun. Just Wing Chun. Yeah, just Wing Chun. Seventies yeah. to yeah. two thousand twenty. 
That's yes, over, yes. what, 40, 40 odd years? Well, I'm sorry, yeah. Wow, and, 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 and you're like, too young, you can't be. And, and those are uh, <laughs> that, the names. The names of the people that you've trained with are, are the ones that are well yeah. known in, in London, anyway. That you know, you said the yes, names yeah, up, yeah, I know yes, them. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of them. I've heard of them. Wow, yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's correct. You know, yeah. um, it was great times throughout all the different seafoods. Well, when different when I met this man, he yeah. said nothing to me for about a year, yeah. <laughs> so I had, I had no clue he had done Wing Chun before. So I was just, <laughs> yeah, I'm a quite a quiet, seafood. I, I, I was, I was a talkative one. one. <laughs> were you um spencer were you um were you at uh, uh sifu sifu man's at the same time when he joined or were you there yeah, after? Well, I, I i started i was still doing i've done martial art when i was a kid so yeah from about nine ten years old i kind of i was a bruce lee fanatic yeah so i, I got into the bruce lee movies because my mother let me go into a video shop and, and, and rent out a few <laughs> bruce, uh, yeah. bruce movies so I was bouncing off the walls when I was a kid. I was hyperactive and all sorts of things. So she just was trying to find somewhere for me to go. And she found a local karate place. So I actually started Shotokan Karate. Um, and that was 10 years old. So you're talking about 1983, 84. Um, and I'd done a little beginner's course. And I was in, I, I just remember it vividly as a kid. I was, I was in my jogging bottoms and all my t-shirt. And everybody had these crisp white suits on and and you, you do this beginner's course, and then at the end of it, it was like he, the, the sensei went up to my mum and just said, you know, he's, he's, he's all right, this kid, if he wants to learn, tell him to come to this place next week, and, uh, but you need a suit. And that was it. I, I went home. I, I think I got my, my actual uh, karate suit, the first one, on a, for a Christmas present, so I must have started in January or something. Yeah. Um, and I stayed with it, and I stuck with it until probably about 88, 89. Um, and I actually... 14 years old, graded as a first hand black belt. And in them days, it was uh, quite rare, I suppose. Um, my sensei was um, in and amongst all Kanazawa and all the guys that used to operate down in Pickett's Lock um, in Enfield, which is oh, yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was just, a t I kind of adored him as a, as a, as a person. Like we, we all kind of look at seafoods and stuff. Even when I was a kid, I don't remember too much about him. I just about remember his name. I'm doing research now to try to find out if he's still going. Um, so I'm trying to find all that sort of stuff. But when you're young, it was like, wow, I just wanted some of that. But I kind of went the other way because I had a lot of problems with my knees as a kid. Um, and it was too much football. I was an athletic type person doing all the footy and athletics. And, and I just couldn't do anything. So I literally had to stop right about a year after my black belt um and i was very young i was only about 15 or 16 at the time and i just pulled away from it all and i, I held a grudge against it for a very very long time because i thought it was the karate that had damaged my knees and all that sort of stuff and, um so i, I kind of never went back to find out any other guys and now i realized as i got older it wasn't the knee it wasn't that it was probably all the football and the athletics i was doing Playing football yeah. in the playground with air float balls and things like that back in my yeah, day with leather shoes on and stuff. Um, so I kind of uh, kind of got a bit Jeet Kune Do, I'd say. I went a very sort of Bruce Lee way, but I never went, went to any other club. Um, karate was the only thing that I'd gone to because I couldn't find any clubs. And I was, you know, looking at all the combat magazines and all that. I can't find nothing. Um, so I went the movie side. So I attended to, I loved the Kung Fu movies, loved Jackie Chan and Sam Hong and Lin Biao and all of these, 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 these sort of things that were coming out of Hong Kong. And there was an underground element to the movies back then, um, which Barry knows about as well, because we, he was all around all that sort of yeah. environment himself back then. And there was a few guys that I, I kind of got to know through what, like a Jackie Chan fan club. Yeah. Um, so I, I used to go up to King's Cross when I was 16, 17, watching Kung Fu movies with all these adults and stuff. I was still very, very young at the time and getting access to all these videos. And one of the groups that was associated with all of that is a group now, Eastern Heroes and a gent called Rick Baker that kind of yeah, got yeah. me into it. Yeah. Um, and he's on Facebook now. So there was, there was certain splinter groups that were all involved in the same thing. And an and old boy called Chris Alexis, who used to run a sort of a Bruce Lee Foundation type stuff. Um, he promoted this big event. Um, saying that Bruce Lee's daughter's coming to the UK. So I was like, whoa, I'm going to go to this because 
it's only King's Cross or wherever it was, I think at the time. Um, and it was in a hotel and I rock up there and I was what, 18, see, 18 years old, rocked up there and was told that she wasn't coming because she had to go home for a personal emergency. But there's this fellow that we've got coming along that met Bruce Lee back in the day. And I'm like, really? Oh, wow, okay, I'll stick around. I was gonna go home. And um, that was C3 Joseph Mann. Um, mm -hmm. He sort of come in with his wife, sat down, and you can imagine, you know, his, his English wasn't that great not know, at the time, not back know. then. Um, and he sat down in front of all of these avid Bruce Lee fans to try to explain, so sorry that Bruce Lee's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm here, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, and just explain his story of how he met Bruce Lee and stuff like that. And I was like amazed. I was listening to someone explain to me the scenes from Way of the Dragon. You know, if you've seen Way of the Dragon, the Bruce Lee movie, yeah. where there's Bruce Lee sitting there, kind of a board out of his face because he's protecting the restaurant and stuff, it seemed to be this Sifu Joe was doing that with Lee Singh back in the day because Lee Singh was a restaurateur and all this lot, and he was the one that sat at the front of the restaurant. At, uh, to kind of take the, the customers in and things like that. Um, and I just thought that was mad. So I went up to him afterwards and I was faffing about a lot. I didn't really want to approach him because I was so nervous, I was quite shy. Yeah. And I sort of went up to him and said, well, this is really mad. And he just looked at me and he looked at my hands. And back then my hands were completely mashed. I was only young, but I was punching through wooden boards and things and concrete things and bricks. And so my hands were pretty mashed up. Uh, and he goes, yeah, really bad. He goes, but I've got something that will cure that. And I was like, what? Well, yeah, well, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah, I have. I've got this ointment stuff, but, which is we know now as Dick Dutch. Um, and I was like, oh, fine, fine. Yeah, all right, mate. And I just left. And it was probably about three, six months later, I, I got the courage to call him up. He gave me this little business card. Yeah. Mm. I got the courage to call him up and say, listen, um, it's that dispenser fella that met you at the... Oh, he goes, I've, I've been waiting for you to call. Um, come down here on Sunday, down in Brixton somewhere. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, what? And, and then my mum and dad are going mad, right? Because I'm 18, I'm, I'm 18, I'm out and about a little bit, but I was like, what, now you're down Brixton? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I went down Brixton and met him in this uh, little house and, and sat down, had a chat with him in, a, in the front room, and that's where I first met Barry. We yeah. literally joined him in and around the same time. week, about a week, two weeks out. Um, and we started training once a week at the beginning. Right. Just over uh, in Brixton. The, by the way, the first time I met him, uh, he didn't know me, I didn't know him, and he was telling me all about Wing Chun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember I was an instructor by that stage. This <laughs> man telling me all about Wing Chun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really know just what I'd read in the magazines. Yeah. Was, you know, the cheetah trips that make no sense. And all the <laughs> did, you, uh, did you originally go to, um, uh, to, to have your hands or to, to, to get some treatment, or did you go there? Or was it no no I, I, I wanted to learn I was uh, right. when I was cry I was a kicker yeah and I used to be one of the first kids back then that could do kind of vertical side kicks and stuff like that but then when your knees go and your legs mm. go you think well hang on a minute and what I was training with grown men and mm. these grown men had the best gap in Suzuki you'd ever see in your life you know they'd kill you with it if you got hit with it <laughs> I was like, oh my god I've got to do something with my hands because I'm, I'm quite, a, I was very, very tiny. Kid. So sure. I was always looking for a bit of Wing Chun after that. And the Bruce Lee thing kind of got me interested. And, and it always looked really mystical in the magazine. So I didn't really care about my hands. I, I, was, I was going on because this man sounds like he's from Way of the Dragon Man. <laughs> 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 and goes, well, I mean, he, he learned as a, he was, he was a waiter or something <laughs> learning from a chef. Right? It's just blew my mind. Yeah. Um, so I just went along for that. And yeah, he gave me, um, a dicta, he had an ointment, did that gel ointment that he gave us to take away after that as well and rub it on or, you know, rest in water and stuff like that. And, um, and it clearly it did it actually helped clear it all up. Um, but it was just a, it was a novelty because I was, you know, I was used to train in a sports hall and I thought if you've done martial arts, yeah. you go into a sports hall somewhere or you know, it's yeah. very official and you pay your fees, you do your things, mm. you get your little license books and all that sort of stuff. And here I was in someone's front room in Brixton yeah. and actually all this Chinese writing was on the wall. Mm. Like right. the bloody movies, yeah, like yeah. Satan, <laughs> Eagle Shadow and all that sort of yeah. stuff. I'm, I'm looking for what is this all about? Not that we can read it or anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the first thing he says to you is like, okay, and show me what you can do. Yeah. I'm like, well, hang on, what, what do you mean? Because like, Mark Hatter, that I specialised in, I was a Bassai Dye now. 
oh, I need all this space to move. Yeah. Um, and he's like, we're in a little front room. Show me what you can do. And I was like, ah, ah, show me a few mm. one-inch postings. See if that's impressive. <laughs> <Not impressive>. <laughs> 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 oh, yes, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear this? Uh, Okay, yeah, don't worry about that. Let's start and just started with forms really. And um, there was a few other guys that were there. One of his yeah. eldest eldest students was there, or as his first ever student was there, um, kind of overseeing everything. It was his house actually. Yeah. So we were in his house for the first year. And within a, a, I think it was less than a year probably. Well, yeah, he, less than that. He just yeah. turned around and said, "You know, we, we've had enough of this. Come, you've got to come to my flat." So we ended up migrating. Okay. Into his flat, which was yeah. actually up in Green Lane's right. Manor yeah. House. All yeah. oh, right, yeah. How, 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 me again. how did it go with with you, Barry? I've interest. Did uh, did did uh, Sifu Joseph Man say, "Show him what you can do"? Yeah, yeah, he did. When, when I saw him at uh, he, in Brixton, stuff, so. uh, he did some cheese and yeah. just a bit. He said, well, "What what moves do you know?" And obviously, muscle memory, plenty of things. But when I had to think about it and put it to, you know. Interaction after we say, well, actually, I don't know that much really, <laughs> even though I've been doing it for a long time. Mm. And so it just like thought provoking for me. And then I thought, well, oh, great. And then he sort of gives a bit of, of conceptual literature to us and say, well, this isn't it. Okay. You know, because most Wing Chun you learn back in the day, you just learn in the class, you do what everyone else is doing. Right. But he was sort of saying, look, here's this concept, this is what it means. And then Makes you think completely different, and uh, yeah, blew my mind. And that was for me what got me in there, really. Yeah, yeah. So he used so um, did you say he used Chinese literature to um, highlight the precise nature of the training. The old boy, in, that's what he said. Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> Maybe he said he had yeah. it on me in the beginning. It would yeah, just he stand there and he, do it. He, used, he used the literature and. Uh, uh, well, it wasn't just literature. Obviously, he had talent himself. Obviously. Um, but uh, it's just his whole persona, his whole character was real. It wasn't nothing fake. Whatever he said he could do, he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was great. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. Dave Stevens so, says hello, guys. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, hi, Rob. Hi, Nick. Nick. Nick Lewis says, was it karate you started with? Because he started with show kind of 17 and his knees are buggered. Yeah, it was, Nick. We did not. <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, but yes, not for us. But I, I, it must have been a combination of everything. Yeah. Of course, I was, yeah. A football I was dangerous. Football training, football. I was training three, four times a week. Right? Yeah, it was just yeah. a Tuesday, Thursday night. It was twice a week. But I went mad on a lot of it. So I was. You know, I was like Ralph Nacho, karate kid, standing there doing 500 kicks in the air in the morning. Yeah. And my mum thought I'd lost my marbles. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and learning another language. I did, I did like the Japanese side of learning the language. And I think that, again, headed yeah. over when we met Sid and Joe. Sure. It was, it yeah, was it's quite wow. it's new, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, well, I'd, I'd grown up in around the movies. Like we were talking about the Hong Kong movies and stuff like that. And I had, obviously had Chinese friends because they were giving me these movies so I could watch them. I didn't know where I could go to get them. Um, so it, it, I was familiar with the, the language more so, I think, than the Japanese. So when he started talking about that sort of stuff, I just thought that's normal. You know, I, I, I haven't done Wing Chun before. Mm. I, I was just there and, and I was to now, when you reflect back on it, just think how lucky and privileged I was to be a part of something that, yeah. mm. and I, I fell across it and stumbled across it in a really weird but way. I think also we was quite lucky because when we met Sifu Joe, it was like, the third year after he was mourning the passing of his sifu, yeah. yeah. oh. so again he was looking to come back out himself, and then he stumbled right. across us, and we sort of fit the bill, and then he pushed on from there. So it was quite lucky in that yeah. sense. Can you um can you tell us a little bit about um your sifu, uh, like his training and when he first came to London and how he first started teaching? Yeah. Um, okay, well he came here in '64, and met Lee Sing roughly the same sort of time, uh, but started training with him in 65, okay? Uh, and then, well, basically he trained through until 69, where then they moved to the Canton restaurant and did a lot of the training down in the basement. They called it the Wing Chun Tom, mm -hmm. which is uh, quite famous for that. And then uh, from, from 69 uh, and then 70, well, they basically just continued, just kept on training yeah. in China, all done in London, Chinatown. Right, okay. Um, yeah, it's 
for him to do it. Yeah, I think it, from from the sort of the the seventies, he actually got given his official Janmo gun. Um, he was yeah. he sort of got happy. Lee Singh always had an idea that he, there's there's a, a big difference between public martial arts and private martial arts. Sure. Um, I think that's something we were talking about before even um, agreeing to do a, a little interview. Um, yeah. And and Sifu was a private student of Lee Singh. In, indoor student. What we call an indoor yeah. student. Um, right. And so for him to be given a, a Jungmo banner, so to speak, uh, Joseph Chen had a, a Jungmo banner. Yeah. Austin Go had a, a, a Dingo banner. Just, just, to, just to clarify, Joseph Chen, these are all uh, come from brothers of his oh, Joe. Joe yeah. Also, oh, yeah, of Sifu Joe, and some of them were older than him, but Joseph Chen, I think, was older. Mm. Just, yeah, and then you got uh, people like Austin Go had uh, his Imo banner, and then you had Sifu Joe with his Jungmo. So there's really only three public schools for Lee Sin back in them days. Um, so by the time he had started teaching in the late 70s, it kind of went through to the early 80s, which is when it just started coming over and paying interest into England. Um, and when he first came to the UK, he used to stay with Lee Sin. Um, the so there's certain birthday times and celebration times. That's where you might have seen some photographs where you got Lee Sing there with all of his students and, and you got It Chun there as well. And it was actually It Chun that wrote the official Junmo banner scroll for uh, Sifu under the guidance of Lee Sing, obviously. Um, and so it kind of presented in that objective to, to carry on teaching. And that's what he done. But I think when you think of, 1980 to sort of 1990 that whole decade he was also just with Lee Singh all the time working in the restaurant so uh, as much as he was teaching it was always quite a, a hard thing for him to do because hey, his language wasn't that great and he wasn't teaching Chinese and stuff like that too much in the early days it was all sort of yeah. quite just, hardcore training. Just to mention it as well because obviously the background to Lee Singh was the end of the day when he came over here He's one of the first people to actually open a school to teach Wing Chun in, in the UK. Wow. And what, so, what, and year, what, year what year was that? Was that in the 50s, did you say? No, he started teaching in 62. 62, 62. Sorry, 63. 63. Yeah. He came over, I think, in 56, but not officially. Mm. And stuff. But 62, he started to teach his, his Wing Chun. And, uh, um, wow, as early as that in, in London. Yeah. Yeah. And only ever to Chinese. Only to Chinese, Chinese. Yeah. There was no, no Westerners on our team. But when he came over, that's, as far as, as we know, he was already uh, uh, um, a doctor in Chinese medicine, already mm -hmm. officially. Yeah. And uh, and also he was, I think, was it 60, when was it 68? Or was 68 or 67, 68 was when they, it, there was an original fellowship. Yeah. That's what you get. Uh, an, an it man started the Wing Chun Fellowship, or yeah. what became later on the Wing Chun Athletic, Athletic Association that they have now in Hong Kong. But before that was initially set up, because that's a very sort of business, um, like a limited company model. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, that, there was this fellowship that Lee Singh was a part of. There was other guys like Lock Yu and Jill Wan were the guys that Lee Singh had sort of met and learned from before he got introduced into Yip Man. Mm -hmm. And they were all waiting in Europe to start this big thing. Um, and, you know, it, it was... Well, in the sense of yeah. Joe and Lee Singh, I'm just trying to get an analogy, is that Joe learned all his martial arts uh, besides opera, because he did opera before he did uh, the Wing Chun, mm. all from Lee Singh. And even the language, the, everything that was Lee Singh taught him, him and his wife taught, taught yeah. Joe. Mm. Joe. Joe was a very, he was a Wing Chun man through yeah. and through. Everything he, he he used to talk about Wing Chun was, it's, it's just Wing Chun, there's no real need. Uh, identify different bits, which is what a lot of people are interested in now, right? Well, yeah. Trying to figure out exactly where things are coming from. So it's but, branched um, out, but the root of it is is what it is. It, they're born. Yeah. That's yeah. There's something all... in that, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. that tree being the same tree and the origin yeah. of that tree, and we've all got these different branches. But I think if we look back on Lee Singh, he was possibly, I, will, I don't know about the first, but one of the very, very few that travelled back then because he had money. And, and he travelled all over China to pick up different Wing Chun lineages. Right. So by the time he met Yip Man, he was already quite an accomplished researcher and practitioner of the style. He just hadn't found a season to follow. Right. Um, oh. And that's why yeah. when he met Yip Man, he just very probably similar yeah. to Barry's experience of 
of uh, meetings with Joe. It was, yeah. it was, he met it, man, and it was like he got totally blown away according to what our CPU used to talk about. And he could not understand how he knew so little when this man just knew everything. Yeah. Um, and it forced the loyalty. So it's one of the reasons why he got his base in the man come to the UK and started to want to represent Yip Man as a martial artist. And then fast forward it to time when we actually met Joe, um, mm. the mark of the man really was that literally he was training, what, four or five times a week, every every day, every, five, four or five times a week. And each time we met him, every time he was teaching us something else. <laughs> So mm. it was been downloaded, and this went on for 10 years. <laughs> 10 years of information, just, just too much, yeah. actually. So, mm. yeah. It is quite, yeah. Yeah, it's quite incredible. Because yeah. the system is, itself isn't that huge. It hasn't got that huge um, amount yeah. of forms and stuff, but the detail within it, the layers within it, yeah, is that's, yeah. where it's that's at, the, isn't it? That's the key, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the key. So, so um, the, in terms of in terms of lineage, so so I've got it. So you have Ip Man, you have Li Xing, you have yes. Joe, and then uh, the, the two of you. Yes. Right. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. What's that? Fourth, fourth generation. Yeah. Sorry, mate, fourth that. generation. Yeah. But very um, one thing we'd like to get clear is Li Xing was a private student. Of, of Yip Man. Lee Singh had no interest whatsoever in uh, the public side and uh, what we'd call the businesses or the money-making mm. sides mm. of martial arts. Mm. Um, he didn't want a full-time school. He was a restaurant owner. He had quite a, a large family, quite a religious man as well, actually. Mm. Um, so that's why we see, and we, there's a lot of things back in the earlier days and back even the days when I was looking into Wing Chun, a lot of stories about Lee Singh and, and, and this, that and the other. And you just start thinking, well, actually, Nobody really knew him from Yip Man's more public students, like his public school, because right? he, he very rarely, if ever, visited the public school, yeah. especially the VTAA. Except for the elders, maybe. Um, but yeah. some of the elders knew. So, like I mentioned, Bob Hill, Jill One, yeah, um, Lerner Shun, and all them guys Shunting. would have actually known and be familiar with him, um, yeah. or at least have met him or have heard his name as well. But he used to take, as far as we're aware, he used to take all of his lessons with Yip Man in the hotels. In Hong Kong, and it actually, from the moment he came to the UK, went back to Hong Kong every single year at the same time, every single year, to, to carry on learning from Yip Man. Wow. And you're looking there you're from the 1960s all the way through to when Yip Man died yeah. in 1972, yeah. 73. Yeah. Um, so he carried that on like, like religiously. And even afterwards, he still went back to Hong Kong to meet other martial artists and carry on that sort of connection in a sense, which is why. Um, when it chung come over, they were already familiar um, and quite close, actually. Mm. So, and then also, so, so to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, Lee Xing's plan was obviously to go to Manchester and build a uh, mm. like a, a tower sports place, different restaurants, gym, everything. And that's what he was developing. And then he went on to move to Canada as well. Um, so in his later years, that's, that was the plan. Yeah. Like Pagoda in Game of Death. Uh, yes, okay. that's <laughs> right. That's right. Arts, yeah. They seem yeah. apparently knew, he, he knew, oh, well, I can't be sure for everybody, but he knew everyone in the UK that was of any significance, Lee seemed tended to know. And some of the guys we've met along the years that are coming from other traditional Chinese systems, sometimes they would know that their Sifu knew who this was and who that was. And, mm -hmm. and it's quite endearing to hear like people that have actually met him that have nothing to do with our family or anything like that, but they may have met him like 30 years ago. And we never yeah. had the pleasure of meeting Lee Sin. He was, he was, you know, he had passed in 91. Like Barry said earlier, Sifu sort of, um, he took that three years out to just reflect and, and it's an older tradition, I think, that he kind of passed on to us in a sense. Mm. Um, and then so by 94, he started to, wow. to look around to see if he yeah. could find a core group of people we could train. Um, and it wasn't just me and Barry. There was a there was a there was a core cool group with us, yeah. sure. um, and then it kind of enveloped from there and, and sort of went a bit crazy yeah. through them. But um, it's quite a journey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's let's, yeah. let's let's talk about let's talk about the the style. Let's tell us, like, explain it. What's what's it like? Uh, how many forms? Like, right. Well, um, Wing Chun in the most 
we've got three forms or six forms basically three empty hand forms yeah. three weapon forms and such or equipment forms as i call it really so this first form which is sea and town a little idea as they say uh, it's chum kill which is searching the breach and then there's bill g which is the darting form that i call it sometimes yeah. uh, and then there's the wooden dummy and then there's uh the stick and Kwan and the knives. So six forms. And in our particular lineage, uh, under Joseph Men, uh, we break our forms into six sets as opposed to most of the other winter schools do it in three. Yeah. So that's one of the differences. One of the main how, how we operate. And then we in under Joe again, we follow concept uh, as our guiding principle behind everything we do. Mm. But a lot of other winter schools follow the forms. And, and what we, what we know as sand cell yeah. technique, the technique based, yeah. the operation of the practical element, how to use it, um, we would more have the conceptual of what the body's feeling in a sense, what the yeah. body's doing, how you're mm. moving, um, and then build it from there. So it's, yeah. it is, it's a very, very small system. Yeah. Um, but again, but within that, of course, there's many um, levels of understanding for what we're doing, so yes. that's where it gets quite detailed. Then at that point, yeah, so, different kind of uh, conceptual approach. Uh, the intent yeah. uh, in yeah. what you're doing, you know, whether whether it's being sticky, being aggressive, being mobile, whatever it is. Yeah, um, yeah. well, we mentioned it's very much a, a, a speed merchant style. Really, mm -hmm. it relies on speed more than than than, than power to, to to emphasize its ideas. So. Uh, everything is geared around that thinking. Mm. You understand that? Yeah. Um, hey, obviously, you guys are aware, and, and most, hopefully, most of the guys that are uh, watching are aware. Winchin's famous for its T cell, or it's it's what we would refer to as an interactive platform, um, where they're connecting hands and, and, and rolling, and they're working out everything and the sensitivity side to to how two people are actually fusing and interacting together. Um, and also that's part of the, the, the makeup of a system that we're talking of a, of a system, not just a stylized version or a style of some individual. I've got my style of training and teaching Wing Chun, Barry had his style of training and teaching Wing Chun, but ultimately the system that we are passing on and we're talking about and how we are sharing that is identical because we're trying to come from, uh, it's like a line by line understanding. Um, and so it gets quite interesting when we meet other Wing Chun people as well, um, just to make yeah. sure that, that everybody's, uh, they can understand where we're coming from, because sometimes it's not the easiest. It's like, like our system to explain to us sometimes, that when you travel, uh, back in the old days, uh, like a Sifu traveling village to village, you can't spend too much time teaching your yeah. students and can't necessarily mm -hmm. follow them around. So you may show them a little thing, go and come back in six months or even a year later, yeah. Uh, and he won't remember what he showed them. So <laughs> he needs something to guide him and then follow through. And yeah. that's a bit like how it is with us. Yeah. So we normally try to talk set by set as opposed to form by form. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. So how would, just out of interest, how would, yeah. how would a set look? What would a set as an example look like? Because I can imagine you, you're saying rather than by form, by set. So a form would be something yeah. like, Right. So, uh, yeah. Yes. You look, take the construct of yes, silver yeah. and you've got where we're talking about six sets of that silver tile. Right. Yeah. Every every time the arms put him back and come into a rest on the side, mm. for us it's it's that indicator that it's a stop and start. The, the stop and start one. Right. Okay. Mm. Um, so you would train and drill everything that you've just done in one move, for example. Um, but you would have a conceptual backing to that. So if I am to train and drill one set of the Sylvan Tower, and Sylvan Tower is famous for being single-handed, okay, but it also has double palms in it and it has continual chain palms and stuff like that in there as well. Um, yeah. But it's a single-hand set. So if I'm doing that and it's just in the one direction, I've got a concept of that centre line yeah. and the body square on, and that's, that's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. How to train that is to open up that whole idea of what is your body capable of doing can mm. i reach out to the right hand side go on go high do i go middle do i go low am i going inside or outside somebody's arm when i'm doing these things 
So then you then have the, the, the detail in a sense to, to draw that set out. So you're then revising and, and going over the many different variations of what that set wow. could do. Yeah. So the ceiling tell then becomes more like, we used to call it epiphany or some sort of a brainstorm, right? You're having a brainstorm about why that's, uh, oh, now let's try this out. And, yeah. and go and you trade it for two weeks and come back this evening and go, no, nah, mate, you, you've gone on the wrong, you've gone, you've gone down the wrong road there. Yeah? <laughs> so then you would end up having to go back and retrain it again and come, okay, yeah, that's better, that's better. You've now got this idea or that idea and what happened. So there was a lot of that. There was a lot of, uh, if, 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 look at Silver and Tower as that one way of doing it. Um, and I'll, I'll refer back to Bruce Lee in a sense, back in them sure. days when he said, if I show you one idea, I want you to come back with another three ideas. Yeah. That's right. And actually, Susan had the same mentality when yeah. he taught us. That's I'm right. going to show you how to use this, and I'm not telling you whether it's mine or not, right? I'm yeah. just going to show you how to use it. And you've got to come back, and you've got to show me how to use that three other ways. Yeah, I like, oh, like that. I really like that. I mean, there's a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. You might like it like, talking now, but when you're back in them days, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're sort of going away special. Thinking, what do you mean I've got to do this coming up from the bottom going up? Or, or something yeah. else. And, you're, you're, and that's what we talk about. Okay. Conceptual and it drugs your mind. So you can really yeah. think about what you're doing and why does yeah. that mean that? Yeah. 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 Which is quite I mean, interesting. I I think a lot of us have been taught that way as well. Like we'd be shown a technique yeah. and something and saying, well, I need you to go back and come back three to six other applications or other, yeah. other ways. And then as I think even as a teacher, sometimes a student will come back with something. You think, oh my God, even I didn't think of that. There's a hundred percent. And and we say this from, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's an understanding, and it, it's something from the heart. That Sifu himself, when he was teaching us, never regarded himself as a as a, as a master. As a, he's a, he's you know, a practitioner. He was a practitioner that was sharing ideas with us, and we were feeding him. We we yeah. we were kind of giving him the reactions that yeah. enabled him then to say, "Oh, now we can move on to this bit, or now we can do this bit that's a bit more complicated." And sometimes he would push us into doing things. And then there's an accident, and then let's stop doing this. <laughs> let's, go too far. let's go back a bit. Yeah, yeah. Let's just check, check where we're at on our thing and all that sort of stuff. And 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 it was enlightening to be taught by someone like that because um, without being saying anything about anybody else and the way they teach, it's, it's entirely up to everybody. We we never really referred to him as Sifu when we were in the rooms. It was just Joe. Yeah. Um, it was only later when he started. To, concentrate a bit more publicly and, and, and enable new people to come in more and more and we're seeing like another 10 fresh faces coming in that oh, should, should we, we call you see when we see all these guys yeah because otherwise you don't you don't look like them for example when we were his instructors mm -hmm. so i was an earth element instructor spencer was a gold element instructor so we all had different elements yeah. that uh, he was responsible for like the, like the five deadly venoms. Yeah, yeah. And we was we were, there were five of us, so yeah, very much so. <laughs> See, if we modelled it on that, he was when he first met us. He was looking for fire. He was searching for fire. Right. Yeah. Which we found very interesting, especially when you look back at the history side. And yeah. You know, the five elders are still under the and all this madness mm. looking yeah. go into it. And five elements, obviously, is a big thing. Um, but culturally, I think them that level of understanding is Chinese culture, yeah. and I think anybody that's doing martial art where you're starting to talk or cross over or look into them things, you're yeah. now studying Chinese culture. If 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 you can either accept that or not, but you are looking yeah. into it, and they're the people that Susan was looking for. He would he he wanted people that would appreciate his culture yeah. and and where he had come from and the efforts that are taken to to sort of get all of that information mm. into a pot because whatever we receive from Sifu, he had received from Lee Sin. And we already know that that was a massive amount of stuff that Lee Sin's passing over to all of his students. Uh, another, another example of difference between our religion and maybe other religions is like, take the Sinem Tower form, for example, where we begin the Sinem Tower form is different to the other lineages because before it begins, we call it salutations, yeah. respect mm. to, to the previous um, Sifus. 
that you are related to. So actually, Simatav starts on the thrice the Buddha part for us. Yeah. That's not a difference between us and I think that the cultural aspect is very important. People that have got, like, I think, the deepest understanding of, of these traditional arts are people that have at least a basic understanding of culture, even if it's yeah. just through yeah. a bit of language. Because yeah. the yeah. language well, holds these. Well, that's why the concepts, the concepts and the literature is so important, actually, in, in mm. guiding your martial arts, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Simple or no simple, you know, you need that. Yeah. So I mean, that, that it doesn't automatically mean that you can fight and you know be the no, best fighter in the no, system. No, no. no. But it's like, like, it's like, understanding. Yeah. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Hundred percent. Where 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 you do done the intro part and we talk about learning how to perform. Yeah. This was nineteen ninety five, nineteen ninety six. Wing Chun was you know the street fighting out there, boom, you know, no messing about, bash, bash, going to finish people up. It was very well known for, for how you. quick it was and everything. And then Stephen Turner got, yeah, 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 but you, you've got to show someone on stage. And we all know if you really just were going how you want to be going, <laughs> uh, it's not pleasant to look at. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, mm. So then the uniform idea comes in, then mm. the music idea comes in, then oh, let's set this thing up and start, you know, showing people how we train, which hadn't really been seen before, yeah. mm. um, which involved larger numbers of people. It's impossible to train Wing Chun on your own all the way through because the system itself is very interactive at its core, in its yeah, nature. The the so, and the more arms you touch, the, the, the more experience and benefit you're going to get and, and stuff like that. So when we first went out on stage and we was performing it, I, I was never interested in fighting. I, I, I never was. Even when I was doing the karate, it was... It was a thing about self-defense, a little bit of bullying when you're younger and stuff like that, that you kind of want to, want to keep yourself healthy. But that's what it was like for me. It was, it was a health mm. thing. And then it became a showman thing. And it was like, oh, wow, this is like me going into the Hong Kong movies or something. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, so it was a totally different way of learning because we could put all of that stuff at the back of the mind. And in all fairness, you... But it's also, it's also a stress test as well. Yeah. <laughs> Stand in front of people doing uh, and showing your skills. It's not... Easy for other people. So to get yeah. out there and do that, especially in the whim, all right, out you go, and you just got to do it. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting. Quite a tough time. Quite a tough yeah. time. Um, so, out of interest, with the way that you were taught in terms of the concepts, in terms of the, the, the sets, is that yeah. something that was unique to seafood? Sifu Joseph, or did that come from Shim? Well, we, we've met a lot of other martial artists and so forth, and, and uncles. We've not seen them practice in that way. So, yes, I'd say that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'd I'd say say the that. language itself, I think, I think Sifu was sitting on something that was um, was not shared with his country brothers and peers. Yeah. Uh, and we don't know why that is. We, yeah. we seriously, yeah, everyone, yeah. It, everybody used to say that Lee Sin treated our Sifu like a son. Uh, he was a, like a son, but every Sifu treats all of their students in that way in some respect. And Sifu definitely did with everybody. But there was something about that uh, Lee Sin was only training uh, and teaching in, in a very uh, a modern way, but with an old concept and an old mindset going on. So, um, why he passed that on to Sifu and he had all of that sort of stuff, we, we still don't know. Even he didn't know. He didn't. We've talked about it many yeah. times. We do know that the first thing Li Sing taught us at Sifu was how to read and write Chinese. So that might have something to do with it, yeah. Wow. Uh, back in the 60s, when Sifu came here and he couldn't speak a word, there were no Chinese schools. There was no, yeah. nothing like that in Chinatown at the time. Um, and and Lee Sin was a simple sort of restaurant owner, um, but he was very involved with the community. So he was he was teaching sun, like a Saturday or a Sunday Chinese school, and that's where Steve got taken long to learn how to read and write Chinese. So that first six months or so that he was doing that, he had no idea Lee Sin was a, a Wing Chun master, so wow. to speak. Um, and when he's finally come up with it, you know, as it, he was a troublemaker, as he, he, was, a, he was a young ruffian. Um, um, and when he found out that Lee Singh was a Wing Chun man, he was like, yeah, right. And then after getting you know, sorted out a little bit, he started training with him. Uh, and then went on from there to become a worker in the restaurants and all that, like with all the other guys as well. So um, Chinatown had a lot of memories for our seafood. We yeah. always wanted to return there and 
and we'll do some stuff, which we managed to. Bless. And, and I mean, a few times I went up Chinatown with Susan, and you could hear that the, the waiters in the in the restaurant were saying, "Oh, that's a true master." About us, if it's quite a proud thing to hear, you know. Yeah. 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 So, very strange. Yeah. Do you, Don't do know you what he done. done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's great. Great. With with respect to to um, Lee Shim and 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 Sifu Joe, is there yeah. much difference between did, did much change as it came down to the fourth generation in terms of how it looks from uh, to, to, to you guys now? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. so yes, I mean, we, we and we've talked about this many times, even with Sifu as well. Yeah, know, and sometimes if you come for uncle, Sifu was part of Lee Sin's generation that existed before it man died. Um, and then times, there was no, oh, you've just got to teach this and this way and this way. In other words, it, it, you know, so if you spent five years on Su and Tao alone, you weren't allowed to see, do nothing else, nothing. Wow. Um, and he trained from 11 through to eight. Yeah. Every day, virtually. Oh. With, with Lee Sin, yeah. He yeah. And a two hours personal training with him yeah. as well. So. It was quite intense for him um, and living with him at some times as well. He, he told us stories of all of him and his comfort brothers all sleeping on the floor around Lisa's house and all that sort of stuff. And, and you're talking about older ones that we don't even know the names of some of these guys, and, and especially the public wouldn't even know the names of some of them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he was number seven, there were six before him, you know, and no one talks wow. about them. And Austin Go and Joseph Lee and the people that we know now all came much later. Um, so their, their Wing Chun is a very hit man. It's got that hit man yeah, feel to it. They've got time, that. Yeah. They've started with a sword and towel. They get through that. They do a little bit of uh, the chi sao stuff and the wall bag. Then let's go into the wooden man. Then they'll uh, oh, go into chunk it, sorry. And then you start doing that. Then they do a bit of double training and then they go into the wooden man. So it's got that step by step sort of hit man feel. Um, and see through for whatever reason. I mean, one, one story, for example, when, when Bruce, when we was told, is when Bruce yeah. came out, and obviously, uh, uh, Lee Sin got word of it from Yip Man because they weren't very happy about it. Yeah. Um, they stopped everything. The, in other words, it was all indoor training at that stage, and then they just stopped and it became very commercialised how they talk. And that's that's, that's why. Mm. It, that's it, interesting. It, yeah. So I think that's why. And he bought a piece of paper, a yellow sheet of paper, showing exactly <laughs> what was uh, yeah. what was taught. Yeah. Like tobacco stained and all sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's right. You know, nice. I just show you this old bit of paper with his handwriting on. It wasn't his, and it wasn't his wife's. It was either Lee Sin's handwriting or even Imman's, right? It was a curriculum. Um, and that's what was taught from that point onwards. Yeah. And other stories later that they tried doing all that stuff, and then by the 80s, mid 80s, it was like, right, all weaponry is gone. All weaponry was taken out completely from their side of stuff. Um, yeah. but it was it was hard because I think you're talking about our Sifu was somebody that had seen a very different way of doing things so when he went out and he started to look at, at what his country brothers even were doing it was very different to what he had been doing interesting so, so in, your, in your could talk about what they were doing yeah in, in your yeah. curriculum then do you do you have you've got the forms you've got the six forms or yeah, you, know, yeah. you split do you split the forms into two sections and teach them separately in two sections, did you say? No, no, no six, six, six sets. Six sets. Three forms, six yeah. sets, 36 sets. Yeah, comes to 108, actually, oh, yeah. together. Right. So, yeah. do, you, do you, within your curriculum, do you have um, uh, any kind of gung training or, you know, other training that's not part of the form, like the... Uh, Power. Yeah, there's, supplementary, there's supplementary stuff, yeah. There's, there's we talk about breathing and, and all that, yeah. But yeah, first, yeah. <laughs> breathing is, is natural, to be honest. But mm. it's like the outside is steady, and then so the outside is calm, and then the inside you just mostly from the brain, yeah. You, you inhale, you call it, concentrate on the cheek, yeah. Use your mind and yeah. your will to direct, yeah. Yeah. What we referred to back in the day it was always sort of hey, like, hey gong, hey, never chin gong. We were Cantonese. Yeah, so so say, yeah. Hey gong, hey gong in the time. Yeah. Hey gong, yeah. Uh, the, so the that's, why, that's why it's yum yum as opposed to yin yang. Yeah. 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 Yum yum and yeah. hey gong, yeah. Yum yum. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do, you, um, do you have any focus on your on your elbow at all? Any uh, elbow? 
yeah. on your elbow, on the elbow yeah. train to, to get a heavy elbow. Just interested because I don't um, know. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's probably more than getting to the chunky area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. There's, a, there's a famous thing called Tum Jang when, when uh, yeah, tum kill, there's, there's two Tum, yeah, mm. Tum Kill, you've got a, a seeking Tum and you've got yeah. Tum as a, a sinking Tum. tum. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about the form, we're always searching for something in the form. We're, we're putting mm -hmm. the arm out to search for that bridge. Once you've contacted and you've got the bridge, there's an expression called Tum Dang. That's when you, that's when you start sinking on top of that bridge. Yeah, um, you're sinking there. The whole way of doing that exercise and 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 yeah, it's it's very very similar to stuff I've seen in in yeah. other Chinese martial art too. Yeah, there's a concentration, mate, but I wouldn't say it's like one of them systems where we, we go into it and we look at it for a very specific time and then you kind of revert back to it. But we wouldn't go in there and be drilling that for for a year or two years on the on the one concept because right. it just um, it changes quite a lot as you're going. Through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it depends as well because certain certain builds are, are, are more suited for for them specific yeah. concepts over lighter people. Um, yeah, brilliant. As much as I try and sink here, I, I'm not going to sink here, man. I'm going to have to fly off somewhere and do something else <laughs> because I'm just not um, built yeah. for that sort. Of. Yeah, but well, we do we do have uh, things for not just the elbow, for actually the whole body. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But remember in mind, remember, remember that it's all end of the day about speed. If if you were to describe in your own words the style, your styles method or the, the Wing Chun style method and training, how would you how would you describe it as to a layman? Like in terms of um, speed, accuracy, and power. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's how simple that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You said that quite quick as well. <laughs> you yeah, take yeah. the speed up. So the, yeah. the, the power the power you're talking about is um, like body connection power. And yes, alignment, alignment. Rather than yeah. joint alignment. alignment. And all of that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. It's, called, it's called six joint force. Yeah. Right. Six harmonies, they call it in traditional yeah. language. Yeah, look up. Yeah. 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 So six harmonies. It's yeah. a whole system of martial art created just for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there is. But we tend to have six, it in all of our systems. Yeah. 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 So what would you what would you say would be the main method of power generation in 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 your Wing Chun? Is it down to, is it is it a mixture of the, the the body mechanics and the speed or yeah 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 very much so. It's not it's not one specific. It, 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 you know, obviously we've got inch power which we know yeah. about uh, yeah. does yeah. that, but that on its own is not it. I mean that's what Bruce Lee focused on. But mm. it used lots of different powers. Um, different ging, we call yeah. them ging, don't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. ging and, and there's different types of one. Yeah. Um, but there's it's still that sort of thing, but we they try we try to get away from the muscle strength. Right. Um, yeah. we, we try to get into that, it's tendons, bones, ligaments, um, yeah. uh, and using the flexibility and, and stuff like that to, to to build strength. And it becomes very a lot of more very whipping power and stuff like that, or shock power and things like this mm. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it has them in there, but to add one character of, of, of what it should just be like, it's like, yeah. Yeah, but that's why, like, our stance yeah. with Dancing King on the stance is obviously an in between stance and stepping, isn't it? So, yeah. very much we're on the move all the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> fact, exactly. then at the same time, we're stance very quickly as well. Yeah. And that's, so, that's, that's the interesting thing about um, um, Wing Chun is that you're always on the move. So, yeah. 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 The ability if you think about if you think about the star as a snake and a crane, yeah. think of those two animals fighting. A snake would be very much stationary, waiting the opportunity to pounce, whereas a crane would be continually moving around, looking for opportunity to move in and grab uh, mm. the neck or whatever he's going to go for. It's that a crossover. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you do see that actually. Uh, but... That those two animals are, are quite uh, relate uh, are quite yes. uh, quite a lot to, to describe the wing chun. Wing chun. So when you thing. see the two south, for example, that we're doing, uh, you see a lot of the wing chun doing. Do, they're normally very stationary and just back and forward. But actually, how we look at it is, you're constantly going in and out. You come in for a purpose, you move out again. 
Yeah. You don't stay there for an hour and then come back out. That's the yeah. logic. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see us actually, you'll see us yeah. on some of the demonstrations and stuff we've done from back in the day, in the present time. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, yeah. Even in Joe's video, yeah. you see some we're, of we're, well. we're, when you When you're stationary and you're not, you've not got anywhere to go, and in a sense, sometimes you'll be protecting your seat or you come from brothers well, behind you and stuff like yeah. that. You're not getting past this whole thing. So mm. it doesn't matter if you're coming from my side, if you're coming from an angle or directly front on, I'm not allowed to let you go. Mm. But I'm not allowed also to just face you and concentrate on you when you come here because then someone's going to come here. So I will stay fixed here, but my arms can move yeah. all the way across 180 degrees. And that's what you tend to see. That's where you see the, the crane can come in from one side and see he's all the way around and step all the way around and come back out the other side. It becomes mm. a bit of a... Well, that's hard work. Show. It's, it's hard, hard work. work. I'll keep doing it. It's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a character, really, of what you've seen us guys do that is quite unique. We, yeah. we don't see many people doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say, um, you, were, you were mentioned earlier around uh, Sifu Joseph and uh, in terms of the going up on stage and, and demonstrating, would you, would you say that enhanced your your training or the way you do your forms because it's, it's a slightly different way to, to go up and and really be yeah 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 it's about your, the spirit you've got to your spirit's got to take you to go on stage and suddenly be fixated into a different mode yeah you know, like for example joe's joe's school is called Jumbo. that means to arouse the marshal or arouse yeah. the spirit so wake it up yeah so so very much you have to do that uh, to go on stage yeah and you know and then switch on but it's like a fight in a fight same thing again you've got to arouse that spirit to go and have the heart to do what you've got to do yeah. and then get out you know like i used to say sometimes um uh, if you go to fight he doesn't want to see he calls it cheese or sick toilet technique he doesn't want to see a, what you do in a fight because it's you know it's not good in the school um but you go in a room you fight who comes out that's it yeah. Don't need to know anything else. A bit like the Ip Man film, actually, if you see the Ip Man film. A bit mm. like that, actually. Mm. Yeah. 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 What would, uh, it, there were changes made as well, Nish. It's an interesting one, because if you really look into it, sometimes when you're performing and you're out on stage, you're, you're almost asked to extend things longer than they really should be. Yeah. Um, you're, you're mm. making the movements a little bit larger because you realise your hoons are should really just be like this, but actually you're doing a great big bloody thing. And, so, so people can see what you're doing and mm. yeah, I can even remember times we changed from sort of we were messing about with 3B and 4B music bars to see what sort of music would fit yeah so then, then you start adjusting the timings of things that you're doing and stuff and so yeah you, you can kind of like choreography in a sense um, you could make something but as long as you've got the, the baseline of what you're trying to accomplish in the show which is where's it was strong point I remember, I remember when i was in sweden this is my days when i was training with uh, the white boat we were doing a demonstration on stage there in the theater and uh, i think there was another school um snake um, what was school called tiger and crane i think it was another school and, and it was all rehearsed at the back end before we went out on stage and the amount of martial arts that was just free freezing up Right, yeah. to go and do their thing. It was it's quite. I mean, then we went no, it's, not, it's, not easy. it's not easy. It's not easy in any way to, to go up and and, and demonstrate no. your your. Exactly. Your, exactly. Yeah. Alex and I have, have, have done it a couple of times, and, and even then, I'm oh my god, you know, you just suddenly. Like, but that was yeah, my that was yeah, my yeah. honor, but privilege. People yeah. like um, Sid with Julian Dow, Dave yeah. Stevens, people yeah. like this. When you go to one of their traditional sort of setups and uh, 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 an event that they host, you know, mm. you, you, they, they will ask, and I uh, kept on asking until we got yeah. the done saying because <laughs> we're about well, like, no, 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 yeah, right, to do go. Yeah, yeah. we change what we're going to do. Stand down there with Sid and Tyler for the boy. That was that. I remember what, doing a few yeah. things for them as well. So you would change up. Your, uh, that was what interested me in terms of um because it, i think from 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 my understanding back in the day when 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 traditional arts would demonstrate they wouldn't always show the full thing or they would change something slightly yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. and also in terms of uh, going up on stage demonstrating sometimes like you said moves are made bigger to make them uh, look big so I'm, i was interested to know if that on stage it was like this, but then 
once you were kind of back in the back in the gun, it was like this is how it's done, you know. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, another occasion when we did uh, it was more or less it was a Wing Chun performance at our, our, our uncle uh, Joe Lee's school and I asked him for the same time and then we was demonstrating and he was demonstrating some of his stuff and then we were after that and did some of our stuff and then there was a to and a throwing and the two Sifus were showing their stuff yeah. it, was, yeah. it was absolutely it's fantastic in a way it becomes very competitive yeah. but it's like yeah, yeah you're about it so, uh, some, someone else gets thrown out to do things yeah. do you but, have um I'm interested in any particular stories or lessons that each of you had with your Sufi that really kind of have stuck with you and you, you're like, I'll never forget that day or... Whether it could be something funny or there's, something like that. No, there's one, I'll, I'll give you one from our side because uh, yeah. I barely was saying earlier, I, I was the gold, the gold element student, uh, which meant I was meant to take on all the weaponries and all this sort of stuff. I was karate boy, so it, it was the stick. He wanted the stick and the pole to be taught to me very early on in training, actually. And we were in Orberg in Denmark. We had just done a carnival. We'd done Notting Hill Carnival for almost 10 years in mm -hmm. straight. It's like a, a mass band in Notting Hill Carnival, flag bearers and all lions and dragons everywhere. Yeah. Um, and we got taken to Orberg Carnival in about 95 or 96, something like that. Um, and we, you know, we were knackered. <laughs> We, we, we had been traveling on a bus for however many 18 hours. We had a big night out and, and uh, you know, we had the carnival during the day and all that sort of stuff. The wall crashed out on the floor, got up in the morning and see if he was like, yeah, come on, it's, it's, it's early enough, let's go. And he took us outside and all I remember is a grass mound, you know, like a big mountain. And he had all these, he had all the flags that we yeah. were swimming about. And none of us had seen any stick, I don't think, at that point. And it was just like, Okay, we all went over this mound, and then you see them just strip all the flags off. And they were like, um, the closest thing I could talk to about is like a plumber's pipe, you know, like pl plastic piping. Mm. He just hands them all out, and that's when he started showing us uh, the Lugdingle Group, the, the six point half pole. That's when he started um, teaching them then. That was the first time, yeah. and we was knackered. I was knackered. Went, what do you mean I've got to hold this up here for well, how well, what, what's this stance called? And you know, you're in a big, big say ping mark, you're thinking, what's going on here? And mm. I'm doing Wing Chun, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking it easy. And my mm. god, he, he really worked as hard. And it, it was like we've been out there, we still had like an 18-hour journey back on the coach, but he just it, it, mm. it was it was like that. It was like it was a it was a gift. It was yeah. something yeah. we had we had done something spontaneous, he just does it. Yeah, wow. Let's go and show you this now. You've done, you've done the flag. You just wave the flag for eighteen hours straight out on the streets, right? Now let's show you what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time when I uh, was at his place. But they used to teach. Some of his magic used to come out in the middle of the night, and yeah. two or three o'clock in the morning. We're still there doing our thing, and then, uh, and I was sitting, just I'm sitting with Spencer here next to next to him, and he's telling everyone there, uh, yeah, you know, have a little laugh and have a giggle. It's only to attack me, just like that. <laughs> and I got every single one of his moves. Yeah. He looked at me, looked at him, and he goes, <laughs> so, you know, moments like that. Yeah. He was like that kind of character. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. earlier that he um he he really, really liked the weapon training. So yeah. that's something that was a, a key focus in terms of, of of training for both of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's weapons men, right? <laughs> <laughs> equipment man. Okay, we are. We, we were big equipment people. Yeah. Um, weaponry for us, um, Wing Chun system. Weaponry for us would be your pole yeah. and your knives. Yeah. But we were known for rat and ring and sticks. Uh, and rat and ring and sticks for us was a piece of equipment that we would use. Yeah. yeah. That benefits yeah. your pole and your knives. But mm. if you don't really know how it's doing that, you, you, you're never, or you're not open to other ideas. I think you guys have, have mentioned so many times before, and especially in this as well, where you're talking about how you can utilize certain modern day equipment and exercises that actually help benefit you as a, as a martial artist. End of, there's no way about it. You, you yeah. appreciate grip strength and stuff. And, um, and this was what it was like. It was we, we went out there with rat and rings, and it was yeah. like, what do you mean you use two of them? Yeah. Everybody had only seen this big rat and ring and someone doing a, over a chi cell rotation, the rat and ring. No one had seen anyone get two of them and start fighting with sticks and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think if you go back into them sort of days, but no one ever done that, and I don't, no one's done it since either. So we know it's something that Sifu had that was very, very unique. Um, right. And then once you start layering on, okay, there's your knives now, or there's your pole, and now let's start thinking of what, how this is going to actually be, because I might be able, you might be able to take, you know, ten hits or something like that mm. with a with a stick against a stick, even you'd be able to take ten things. But once you start increasing that weight to a pole, yeah, yeah. you might only take one of them and then you're, you're dropping the thing because it's it's going to kill you. Mm. Uh, and that, there's a problem. Um, I think many people, they train the pole because it's a supplementary exercise. And you, you forget that we're Wing Chun, we're I know, scientific, if you like, the, the most modern sort of uh, evolution, in a sense, of, of old traditional martial arts. So um, we've got to keep keep alive things like that, but never turn yourself off to yeah. new equipment coming in and new things that you can use that actually are giving you the same, if not a better result. Um, although you would struggle to, with someone like Barry over here to say that anything's gonna give you a better result than the original thing. Of course. <laughs> been doing it for so long, and it's, 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 there's a lot that can be said for that as well. Um, no, it's, it's, with, with weapons, we obviously interacted a lot. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of, not just two man sets, but it was, you know, group sets, you know, you against eight or whatever, and you have to do your thing. But sometimes even empty hands against a stick and all kinds of stuff. So we, sure. you know, we covered quite a lot of ground. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it became natural for us to do that. You know, yeah, Are there, you, I know you were saying earlier on that, um, that Wing Chun is a, a, you need to have people to train with. So uh, I assume that you have quite a lot of, in terms of two man drills. Yes, 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 yes. yes well, obviously, the, the famous ones, obviously, Chi Sao, you know, mm. and all that. But uh, the difference about our drills, I would say, they're not set other than in concept. Right. Yeah. So you're very much, uh, you understand the posture, you understand a, uh, uh, a concept, and then you then develop from their reactions right. of those particular things. Yeah. yeah. There's well, there. Are there any major differences in your Chi Sao? to others, other schools? Like yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think the, the snake and crane thing is the first mm. start. This one. We have a platform. I, I like to refer to these things as platforms. And, and we have a G-cell platform where we're concentrating on that adhesiveness and that mm. um, sort of manipulation and control in a way. But we have a look platform, what we call a rotating arm platform, that's a little bit closer. And it's a little bit more hardened. Um, yeah. It obviously is, is, we're talking about different ranges going in and what would work best in certain ranges and stuff like that. Um, so they tend to be different. And we have the same, like Barry's talking about the conceptual awareness of we are revolving the same sort of things. We refer to something called the seed all the time, or the Wing Chun seed all the time. Um, so we are fusing with each other. There is no competition happening there. One person is, is yet to make an advance. So we're using this first to align everything up and, and get the health going first. Because if you can't even turn that interaction at full speed, mm -hmm. yeah, the most maximum power you can get with the most minimum effort you can put into it, in a sense, mm -hmm. famous Wing Chun sort of idiom, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what's the point in putting a sand cell technique in there? Mm -hmm. we, we, we would throw one in, um, yeah, just get cancelled off. And that's when we understand that that actually to put the sand or the fighting techniques in, you need to seriously consider uh, your drilling, strength, training, conditioning, and everything. Because if someone's rotating as quickly and doing what they're doing, that we do just complementing each other, yeah. um, a lot of stuff just bounces off. It's like throwing stones at a spinning ball, yeah. isn't it? Everything's yeah. just bouncing off of it and it's not going in. So yeah. ultimately, what C used to say is when Chun is a defensive system first. You must have that concept that you're just prepping yourself first before we start talking about now what does this technique do for map form or what have you. Um, mm. And I think uh, it might be the same as some of the older Sifus as well, where they, they're quite happy for you to come up with how you use that technique from that form. Show me that. Well, oh, that's okay. It does work or it doesn't work. And then go back to the drawing board. Yep. It would very rarely show you how he used that technique from that form because he would he would just want mm. his students to come up with it if you know yeah exactly. if, he, if he shows you that and it becomes a fixed thing that people think oh that's yeah. That. yeah 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 
but and there must be fixed things i think there, there will be a certain element of fixed things there yes yeah. that's that's the most efficient place that that one can be used at that time or have it but when you look at the, the the amount of times you interact and the amount of opportunities you're passing all the time um sometimes because you're just trained with a, a, a kung fu brother you're not going to just go on them and, and start taking advantage of every opportunity otherwise they don't get the time to train <laughs> although i experienced that a lot because a lot of these guys were old wing chun sevens that are <laughs> yeah, yeah. you go to move and you just shut down you know how the hell did that happen i thought i was good at this shit um but you've got to look at it in in that way it, it's oh. I, I well, much prefer you, you that, do, that interactive idea rather you, you than do develop that. after a while. Oh, an expensive example of that, where obviously Sifu's watching us doing what we're doing, making sure that we don't go too far. Too far. And, and I think one time Spencer was going too far <laughs> and, and he had to stop it because at the end of the day, he was put in something called kill position. Kill mode. Right. Um, <laughs> and and, uh, the mind now is getting into an area that uh, does anyone move after that? And that yeah. is, yeah, yeah. So you, you, the students don't come back from that, right? Yeah. Uh, they, they, I, uh, there's a little bit of, you know, I'm not going to say they piss themselves, but there's a little, a little bit of trouble happens. <laughs> yeah. When, when that happened, yeah. And you don't know. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I was still a young kid in my eyes. And, yeah. um, mm. and he pushed you and he pushed you. Um, and then when you come up with it, it was like, it was almost shocks. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. come out, stop, 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 stop. Go upstairs, go and sit down, have a cup of tea. Like, what the hell's going on, man? I thought I was doing what you were asking. He explained much later what that was that you see. And it was like, that's scary, man, because I did with my kids when we were, I, I've got two kids. They're now sort of 16, 18. And when one of them was younger, I was in heavy training and I'm napping on the chair and she come along and she booed me and I automatically just went, <laughs> she went flying across the room and she used it as a story today. She tells all her mates that <laughs> daddy booed me across the room when I was younger and it was like a reflex that you just yeah. I don't know where that's coming from. But um yeah, it's 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 dangerous when you start going into yeah. stuff like that and you guys will know yourself, you you're, yeah. you're training yourselves to be the superhuman being. Yeah. Yeah, it's you react. You react. Yeah, and, and you're not going to be the you're not going to be the same as everybody else. But our job, I think, as martial artists, is to try to be the same as everybody <laughs> else, um, and not freak too many people out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets difficult as we get older because we really do want to share and show. And as you you'll be aware, myself and Barry have no students. We don't we don't openly teach in that sense mm. um, and we've we've tried in the past to do stuff with the young academy and things like that but it kind of draws people in and their little flowers are open and closed and open and closed we've mm. never managed to sustain um, mm. students to actually have a whole day like what um, no, no, done we, with us so well we're, we're looking not, at not so we've been told guys in the, in the past mm. but nowadays roughly we've been in three years yeah, lockdown. Do you do you do much in um in the way of uh, of conditioning? So when I mean conditioning, in terms of limb hitting and 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 strengthening the body through any kind yeah. of tools. And well, a lot like of that, that is done on the wooden dummy for us. So mm -hmm. the wooden dummy is is, is our uh, is our friend. Yeah. Uh, so we can we do a lot of um, conditioning on the wooden dummy. Get the angles. Um, Positions. Uh, sometimes we call it uh, attacking the, the the corners, so to so speak, yeah. the joint and so off. Uh, so yeah, we do a lot of that, especially. I think it was it was very. He loved the sandbag um, as a piece of equipment, and I think that's what we need to mm. kind of be clear yeah. because we. I, I walked into a room one day and the sandbags were all over the floor. Now we did sandbag. There's just ten of them all over the floor, wherever it was. And it's getting people to do cheese sale on the sandbags. And I'm, I'm like, hang on, no, we have these on the wall. They're a wall bag, right? So <laughs> what are they doing on the floor? And that was a way that he was conditioning their falls. So we had no pads and stuff like that, like the proper nice mats and things. Yeah. So when he had taken them to the floor, it was conditioning them a little bit then. And you could see him sitting down and he, he was very, he loved the, uh, the most amazing palms, hands, strength. Um, and he loved using... That sort of stuff oh. that could be doing, like yeah. sort of iron palm stuff, what we would mm. generally call iron palm. But I wouldn't say it, but he was very, very careful because with with all of that stuff, it, he, if you came, if you turned up to train and you had injured yourself doing something like that, yeah, he would lose his top and send mm. you home. 
Mm. And like, yeah, what, what's the point in turning up, Danny? You just injured yourself. Now you can't train and you can't help your brothers to train. So go home. Mm. Don't want to see you mm. or something. So wow. we were very, he had the right time, but he was a, a belief in little often rather than doing it all the way. Some of us get carried away, right? Crash it out and bob it. tired, yeah. Yeah, get excited, get damaged, graze up knuckles, get a bruise on the arm, whatever goes on, and then that's it. It's like that. Little and often, little and often. Also, uh, well, it goes back to the early days, we used to go and learn from him. Um, there was no cheers or anything. Everyone had to just sit on the floor, cross-legged, and then just follow the lessons from there. You're not allowed to put your back on the wall. Just sit there. Yeah. By the time you finish, you're trying to get up, you can't, your legs gone dead. <laughs> you know? But it's always like that. So he very sticks to the on his I'll, I'll put the hand up on it because I was probably the one to blame for that. Because mm. I, like I said it a bit, I had bad knees. Uh, I had a condition in my knees and and hips, and I couldn't sit on the floor. Mm. And it was like uh, there's my five year punishment. Like, mm. uh, yeah, well, well, every time I got so to speak to see if you got to sit on the floor. Oh my lord, <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, but that's how it was, and he just literally cleared his room. Was actually about similar size. He just cleared his room. We all just sat on little cushions on the floor, and after a while, you could chill out a little bit. But yeah. other times, you did it you with a ruler or something to make sure you're still sitting up straight. And, yeah. And all that you, sort know, of stuff. you mentioned that um, Li Xin was a, 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 a traditional Chinese doctor. Yeah. Mm. Did that did that learning uh, uh, come through in terms of um, in terms of medicine and healing? To, into uh, well, uh, yeah. so there's there's stories in there. there yeah. I mean, there was one student of Lee Sin called John Ho, um, and John Ho was uh, an older kung fu brother. I think was he in the seventies, yeah, seventies. So yeah, a younger one. Mm. So he had, had done a little bit of medicine and stuff, and, and we met him later on in the years, and he he had his own pharmacy down in. Uh, I think it was his Clinton way or somewhere like that, where he was very into all the massage beds and the infrared stuff and all of that sort of time. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was the only student we met that really paid an interest in that side of leasing stuff. Leasing, um, as much as we call TCM these days, um, he was a herbalist more than anything else. He didn't really needle, he was not a needle man. Herbalist, yeah. uh, a lot of uh, what we call toy art and, and the massage yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what put our seed for off. He always used to yeah. say, you know, he'd go around old man's house and he's cooking some medicines or he's doing something yeah, and a stench and all that. <laughs> oh, like it. And it's a regret that some of these guys have later on that they wish they would have yeah. uh, kind of yeah. gone back and, and learned from that because it was yeah. a very specific knowledge sure. that he had. But um, yeah. the stuff from there, I think, was, was yeah. it bled into the Wing Chun, like the, the whole concept side to the art where you're talking of a way of life and, and these sort of things there's some elements of that within studying Chinese medicine as well so yeah. we, we're still unsure of where all of that stuff kind of comes from but what you tend to what specific Joe's to do is maybe basically manipulation yeah. it could do all of that yeah releasing, releasing the uh, chi any yeah. damage you got you yeah. could take care of it and if he couldn't take care of it with a medicine itself he had sent you to someone that could <laughs> but we were lucky that we didn't there's only a few hospitalized students over yeah. the years mm. um so <laughs> it was more sort of uh, like the dictar rubbing and stuff and, and they had a specific medicine that they like to use and stuff like that so but yeah so. each of you do you have a a favorite form or a favorite Training that that you like and why? Uh, this is not really. I mean, it's not, the thing is, I mean, well, yeah, okay. Chum kill probably. I, I, I quite like chum kill, which is a second form of injury, because chum kill is very much um, a bridging form. As we just talked about it earlier, uh, so it helps a lot of your advancing motion in what you're doing, um, and it's quite a tough form to learn actually. Because uh, it requires a lot of energy, um, but that's the form I, I, I quite like. Yeah. But I like all of them, but all, all of them nonetheless. But that's one probably for anyone. I'd say it's for me. Yeah. I'm thinking about um, the the Wooden Man is a favourite because I never I never got a Wooden Man until we'd left uh, left Super. We had been sent out to do this club and all these sorts of things. Um, and until I I had a Wooden Man before I made this place, but 
it was almost the reason I made this place. I built this place around with the man, uh, and that's something that I, uh, I not just because of the basic training and the foundation stuff that we used to do on the Wooden Man, but it, it just has that special significance. Especially now that sifu has gone, I feel more like a presence of him in front of us sure. when I'm going around that Wooden Man, and I do sometimes on, on thin air. Even I, it's only come through brothers and people that give you that sense back that whoa, this is definitely a CV student here, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, so I'll probably say the wooden man. I mean that in 108 form yep. sense and all that. And yeah. that's my next project that I'm hoping to do in the next I'm, month or I'm, so. I'm for sure thought, I thought you were going to say a weapon form. That's all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would do. I would, I would hopefully just come out there and uh, yeah. I think the wooden man is a lot more public yeah. than uh, yeah, sure. that. I do. I have a... I had a very big attachment to uh, the equipment stuff, and especially the weaponry. I think the pole form was something that I, I, I took on. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I did. There's something very special about it. And I, I, I'll give just one example. I and mean, I might, we might sort of talked about this before, um, especially if you've seen me talk about I'm the verbal one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, um, it's the young girl, yeah, yeah. The, the one out in the line. <laughs> exactly. <time>. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll. Looking boom bombs for us is six points and a half pole. Yeah. We don't refer to it at all. We never did as a six and a half point pole. We refer to it as a six point and a half pole. Um, so it is a very dear endearing thing to us um, because I know how special it was and I know how special the form from Lee Sin going into the seafood was and for us to actually get that. And Sure. Towards the end of training, and you're, and you're doing all this stuff, there were so many different versions of that form. Mm. <laughs> because, like you're saying about going on stage, they're the sort of things we never showed. Yeah. Um, the, the what I'd call the Wing Chun version, the stripped down, very basic. This is yeah. what's going to look like something. It always had a little bit of flair in it. And uh, uh, so now it's that's that's quite a treasure. Um, okay, to interesting. Just keep going. Um, nice. But the, the more public thing that I think everybody's a little bit more familiar with is the wooden man. Um, yeah. So I do like that. And yeah. In lockdown, obviously, no one can train with each other. It's uh, But we do emphasize on 108, not, not 160. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what is a, a typical training session or class look like? Um, well, we call it workshop. Um, yeah, you have yeah. like a, a workshop. So you, you work from a particular equipment to another particular equipment. So a wooden dummy, for example, maybe to a, a two-man set with someone, then maybe to do an individual form on your own, a bit of floor work that we do, a floor, uh, and a little bit of bag training. So it's like a workshop. Yeah, any workshop. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, that's a typical training. After you've received some conceptual understandings of what you're doing before you go in there, I think back in the day when we first started with the Young Man Academy, they were two hour sessions. Yeah. And we're, we're a toss a coin. Barry do the first hour and I'll do the second hour. And then the following week, I'll do the first hour, he'll do the second hour. Mm. And we went with our curriculum and it was like, you know, we've done the line each. Mm. So it was our job to have a little chat before. Oh, I'm going to yeah. just do this line up. Okay. So if you do that, I'll, I'll do this line and try and complement it all out. But then as the teaching, we, yeah. we were very disciplined in the beginning to get the guys through that sort of training. Mm, um, yeah. And then we started just playing. So it was exactly. like, I'm not going to tell you what we're doing. You've got to know what life yeah. is. Um, and and some people are not good with literature or about language, so then we give them numbers. Numbers, yeah. numbers like this is number one, number two, number three. Right. And that's how they can yeah. follow it. In a, and hopefully they can catch up with the language. Out of interest, well, Barry, yeah. what was your first Wing Chun, ever Wing Chun lesson like? I mean, what, how did... Well, as like I said, well, my first lesson was with Jay Pang, as I said, and uh, uh, it was chaos. <laughs> you know, because everyone was doing their own little thing, yeah. was standing tall, feeling, playing the super role, and it was just everyone just did their own thing, more or less, and he just showed you, look, do this, and that was it. It wasn't oh, much to it, really. What did, what did you do, though? Were you doing, like, uh, uh, just great punches? punches. And Punching yeah. and uh, punching and watching and punching, yeah, because it wasn't that much interaction at that yeah. point, yeah, you know, because everyone was so much into themselves that yeah. you didn't want to do that, yeah. but yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. what I remember. That's way yeah, back in time, different from mine, yeah. I think, totally different. What was yours? So like? you have, 
My first yeah. lesson was with Super Joe. So um, I always remember, yeah, it was something like this. Look at that flower. It's like, wow. <laughs> and the next minute, it's like, yeah, we were punching, but it was interactive. So he got uh, an old, his nephew, actually, um, who's quite well known these days. Yeah. Um, his nephew was there in the back garden. And, and he had trained a little bit, so his forearms were quite tough. And I had to try and punch his face while he was trying to punch my face. So it caused this kind of crossover interaction in your fists. Yeah. And I, that was painful. Um, and that was pretty much the first few exactly. things, a little bit of a flower expression and, and, yeah. and try and punch them. I went to um, Simon Lauer now. Simon Lauer was quite a contrast with Simon Lauer, other than the basic warm-up, then you're doing marching techniques. So. Mm going backwards and forwards, the whole one side punching the other, the other side doing whatever technique they're doing. And they're doing it at full power. So obviously as a beginner, you've not got much, you can't do much really. And you're going to get someone who's like one of the senior students there and he's just pummeling and you come out your arm is black, blue, and the chest is hurting and everything. <laughs> but, uh, that was how it was in those days. Yeah, it was great, it was good, it was good. Yeah. Have you, um, have you have, as you've come through, the years of, 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 of training Wing Chun, have you changed or adapted your training methods? So um, I know you were saying earlier on Spencer, maybe not so much from Barry, but do you, do you, include, do you incorporate pad work? Do you incorporate bag work? Uh, is there much in the terms of, of, of free sparring? Is this to Spencer or to me? Both of you, yeah, both of you. Oh, right, right. Um, well, well, at the moment, there's still no sparring because we are still covid out. Um, yeah, in just in terms of the training. Like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm, I went through a little bit of a spell where I started, um, I'd never done a press-up until I turned 35 or something, I'm 45. Yeah. So yeah. I'd never done a press-up in my entire life. Um, never done sit-ups either, really. I've never done any form of other exercise. And when we were with Sifu, he, he, he would sort of condemn you, I suppose, if you were doing too many other things. What do you want to do that for? Get your stick. What do you want to do that for? Get your yeah it was very sort of but as i've got older i've we've had the pleasure of working with kung fu cousins um mm. there's a few gents um yuri fleischman and um, perry smoke from over in austria and germany and these guys uh full-time professional martial arts um, invite right. us to go over there to do seminars and, and this was about 10 years ago, I suppose. And that was when I started seeing like, shit, man, my, my physical body is crumbling. Um, because I wasn't training as much, I suppose. And uh, yeah. I wasn't spending that sort of time on it. So I, I started to take my health and fitness a little bit more seriously. So I've got a bench here. I would, I would bench press now. I started doing press-ups or I've got a hanging bar where I can pull up or I can hang upside down and sort me back out most times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've got a bit more... Well, we've always done sort of pad work, um, wall bag work, hanging bags and stuff, punch bags. I mean, even Steve had them back in the day. We was, but they were a rarity, just like a rat and ring and a stick back then was a rarity. Yeah. The first yeah, rat yeah, and yeah. ring was a, a load of kind of wire metal all, all wrapped around itself and tied with a bit of string from B and Q. Yeah, we didn't have a proper a proper setup. So that's right. Yeah. Well, in my side, I'm. Probably semi retired now, so I take it easy. The <laughs> treadmill, <laughs> don't let him go in there. Because I've done a lot of sparring and that sort of stuff back in the day, in yeah. the time. And uh, yeah, the way that Joe sort of conditioned us to think nowadays is uh, you just get up and do it. It's not, I need to spend time to go and go, unless I'm going for a semi professional situation, yeah. mm. then you know, you, you have your ready in your locker what you can do. So it's not. Yeah. Yeah, not too, not, not too bad, really, in yeah. that sense. Is there much in the way of um, of uh, of chinna in uh, in Wing Chun? Oh yeah, so, yeah. Well, more kamla. That's what we like to. Okay, yeah, kamla. Kamla. Yeah. Kamla. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coming from your lap styles, I mean, the the Wing Chun system is very famous for lap style. Yeah, yeah. and lap style is there because you've got to be able to catch someone before you can even do any of that sort of stuff. And when yeah. when you start talking of the speed, the kamla stuff. Um, a lot of pole orientated things when we're leasing out a, a, a lot of things that he was showing sort of sound soul stuff that 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 the base of what this specific thing would do um, so yeah it comes into play after yeah. pole training especially and, yeah. and also chiso a lot of chiso is, is sticking so a lot of sticking is very easy then to go into 
Grab and hands, grab and grab it. Mm. So look there as well. It's hard yeah. to train though, because you've got to have somebody that A, has got strong enough joints to take it all that you, you know, you're not going to just start popping joints to left, right and centre. Sure. Um, and wood and a wooden dummy, of course, as well. As, yeah. And a round wig, and yeah. a stick, and a knife. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Is there a lot? Because uh, uh, it's been a long. I, I I remember watching um some of your live videos, uh Spencer, when you were showing the oh, wooden uh, wood dummy, which was which was great. Um, I actually really liked how you start with a kick. You know, your entrance yeah. to it, and, so, and yeah. I thought that was. I really like that. I thought, wow, well, you know. Um, yeah, I've well, we seen were, that. I've not seen that before. I, I, I don't know. Normally, you see the start no, where they, they go we into start. Yeah. Yeah. We I, I really like that. That's actually that's how I would like to do it. You know, if I would, it would be yeah. you start with an entrance. You know, um, but is there? Do you well, we was always one of these um, when we first started with a man. We didn't start with 108. We we done what they uh, people generally call the plum flower with a man train. Mm. Um, or far Jong in Kansas, we would call it. Um, and that was not <laughs> the 108. That was how to go in and come out, yeah. and go in and come out, and then go in and go up, and go in and go around, and then go up, and then go in and come out. And so, and he's, he, he again, he sounded very like Bruce Lee. He goes, well, what's what? What's the closest thing of you to me? If nine times out of ten is going to be your leg, and my longest weapon nine times out of ten is going to be my leg. So why would my first reach to you be with my hands i'm always going to reach you with my foot and test your your ground out first because nine times out of ten a lot of things will finish the moment they that's why the size are so strong take like the first leg boom done right this is a very powerful mentality and a concept to have is that you take that foundation away what, what's going to happen on the top yeah well, you take the, the attraction and then you get distracted because things are happening below um yeah. but we still see yeah. when we do that on the wood of man um there's a left and right side to the 108. Yeah. So there's a way that we can go in and operate that side and come out and then go but, in. And but that's just um, lifting footwork from there. Yeah. You know, it's, words, it's not a kick, it's a lifting footwork. Quite interesting. And, it, and that, that, I was mentioning that because I, 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 when I was watching uh, do it, there was a lot of grabbing and, and, and pulling. So yes. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Come, come, uh, practicing the Kamna on the wooden dummy as a, as a training method, yeah. as a training tool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. which is very important in Wing Chun, the wooden dummy. Mm. Um, what do you think that the first set that goes in the 108, that's mm. what I think you're, you're probably talking about a little bit, where you've reached behind it and you're pulling and pushing in. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and even as a, as, as a first thing that you're going to do, you've got to remember that's it man's signature, that's it man's possibly his creation in a sense or his memories from his childhood. Mm. And the first thing you're going to do is go in and grab someone's head. It's It's... Mm. Unreal, and that just goes to show how close you've got to be to do that. You can't do that from leg distance and, and, and five feet away, you've got to get yourself in there to be able to be in that position and take what's coming. And that's what uh, it's, it's a quite hard thing, I think. To do. Yeah, well, there's probably a lot of emphasis on, on footwork in Wing Chun as well, right? So, in terms of movement, yeah. in terms of and yeah, it's a very mobile system, system, very mobile system. And footwork is very important. Um, yeah. As I said, because in the day, the Kim Nong Ma, for example, as I said, is an upright stance in a sense. Mm. Uh, it's designed so you can move quickly from A to B to C or wherever you need to go. So it's, it's a fundamental. You, you, you mentioned floor work, Barry, before. Did you mean did you mean stance work, or did or, or is there a floor element to what you do? Uh, uh, yeah, floor work. Is, what we mean by that is um, a lot of tumbling on the floor. We do, which is normally what we use. Um, to avoid takedowns or to get oh, off of common lines and stuff like that. So yeah. Because yeah. Obviously, we, obviously we don't want to fight on the floor. Yeah. So we use the, those sort of things uh, to get out of there, basically. Oh, so you're you you learning, learning, learning how to fall, learning how to tumble. Yeah. Yes. That's really yeah. important. Right. Right. Oh, that was one of the things, self-defense-wise, uh, the ways you would say, well, you've got to A, learn how to be hit. And there's no tougher opponent than the floor. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to take you down, yeah. and you haven't trained to hit the floor, mm. and we didn't have mats. <laughs> so not at the beginning. No. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> how are they going to fall? So you know, then all them things were were yeah. a play with with how he was doing stuff because he was trying to be a you know we, we demonstrated as well on the stage. You imagine, and I might do that 
what, 10 times against mm. 10 different people, or I might do it yeah. 10 times against one individual. Mm. If you really flap them down there and they don't know what they're doing, that first time they ain't getting up to yeah. come back and do it. <laughs> so it's, you know, yeah. we, we had to do them sort of stuff. And it is and like a tough and thing. And the thing with the stage as well, when you're taking them down and they, it's not just throw them down on the floor. You've got to take them down the nice right place in there. And that <laughs> requires skill. You can't, you yeah. know, because it's not going to operate with yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, not a, that's part of the floor work that we do. Yeah. How, um, yeah. I'm interested, how, um, uh, for both of you, because you've, you've been in winter in, in a, for a very long time, how has, how has it developed for you in the later stages? Now, what do you, what, what do you emphasize on more now than you did 10 years ago or 20 years ago? Um, or is it, do you, is it now just for you? We still focus on the basics. What, like, what, what, what's the? I think literature comes in a little bit more now. I think we're both getting at the age well, where the language and that sort of thing is coming back in again, and it's reminding us of. I think it's, I think it's more holistic yeah. now. It's probably a better way of looking at it. It's been, it's, it's, it's much more rounded. Um, whereas before, maybe it was very much clash. You know, um, now. You, as I said before, you know, whether it be the floor work, whether it be um, the weapon work, whatever, you, you know, you never, you don't learn those things from day one. Yeah. You develop it over time. Um, so as your skill gets better, then you understand more about yourself. Yeah. So uh, how it's changed really is inwardly. I think you just understand more about how to move around using the trim yeah. to do that. Yeah. As you're, as I you're, think it's brand new, in a sense, it's the same as that. I'm 45, um, and if I think I started at 18, 19, yeah, and my my body has changed over the years. I had a lot of damages that come back <laughs> when you don't train for a little while. Suddenly, that that little shoulder thing that happened back in 1992 has come back and kicked me in, and, and it's like ah, oh, and then this back one, then this one. So I think you get more confident i suppose or more aware of, of your own limitations of the body as you're getting older so then then you're trying to research and find ways to maintain that because uh, i think all of us want to be able to carry on going as long as we can and when you've got to see if it was like what well i mean i see for that it's a, a sudden death and he was very young he's 63 odd years old um and you just think, wow, I, I want to live a bit longer and, and, and do a few things. And if we were cracking it out too much all the time, I don't think um, it, it's not going to be good for your longevity. I yeah. Think also, don't, don't forget, in the early days, the early days, you had the Bruce Lee phenomenon, and then you had the Thai boxer phenomenon that was going on. So everyone was all about that kind of um, mm. way of doing the martial arts. Sure, yeah. By the time I got to Joe and, and, and his... Um, his approach, uh, we're trying to get away from, from that continuous um, way of thinking and, and much more, become much more artistic in what we yeah. do, I suppose. Yeah. That's the best way of phrasing it, yeah. Mm. yeah. So I'm just going to go to the, to the group and see if there's any questions. There's a few that's come up. Yeah. Um, Apologies, guys, my, my internet has died, so I've just been on my phone. Um, no worries, Al. Oh, we, we see a shift. We see yeah. him. We see him. I thought he was exercising. <laughs> <laughs> we had another live stream going on there in the corner. Yeah. So, Sifu Sean has said, said, just said, I met Lee Shing three times with his Sifu. Yeah. So, yeah. Sean, as in Sean Whitaker. Yeah, Sean Whitaker. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Whitaker. Yeah. Um, we've got a question. You also framed with, there's another bit there. Sorry. Uh, Go on. Can't see. Let's have a look. Uh, is, uh, um, da, 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 da. Okay. What's the difference between Ving Sun and Wing Chun, or is it the same? And then someone says, uh, Ving Sun. I'll was, see that one. Oh, Ving, Ving, Ving Sun was cooperated by Leung Ting. So I guess that's answered that one. Um, yeah. um, it's, it's, no, it's, it's the spelling. It's, it's, yeah. it's the toilet. <laughs> it's the toilet. <laughs> that's the difference. Because yeah. they didn't like using the name Wing Chun because Wing Chun. Was the WC, and that's why they started. Uh, Yip Man changed it to uh, VT. Yeah. That's the reason. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, and then we've got a question. Uh, what do you mean by the elements? So I, I think you said you were uh, gold and gold uh, and yeah. Earth. Just that. Uh, so if you used to teach 
um, a character. So it's a personality. So if I'm a, a goal character, my concentration on learning was all of the goal element side to what metal. he had in the winter, which is metal. Um, so any weapon, gun, um, anything that involved um, shiny. And in other words, it's the clarity of what you see because performance as well. Um, it's very gum. It's very gold element mm -hmm. because you, yeah. you know, if you see any other cans on opera and they go around, dang, 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 then they right. stop, bang, and they whack a posture up, and the audience starts to clap. That's right. Yes, yeah. same sort of mentality. Yeah. Um, and then you look at the earth element yes. and toy, uh, toy. So then that's very much uh, well, like a mountain. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah, very, very solid, very uh, uh, unmovable. So it's like an avalanche. That kind of power element, yeah. If you know, so, so with gold is more penetrating, yeah. Um, uh, earth is more that way, yeah. and of course, there's other elements like wood. Wood is like a cane, very bendy, yeah. You know? Spring yeah. force, not spring force, force yeah. 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 Um, Fire yeah. element people tend to have with that yeah. friction, yeah. Friction, um, and that yeah. sort of uh, what we used to joke about in Chinese burns, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so if I'm doing cut and I sell it and I create friction, so it's actually tearing skin and tearing the tendons and wow. stuff. Like that. Yeah. Um, and the final one, soy, which is water, that's got to do with the shoulder, a lot of uh, the flowing, the flow and yeah, yeah, that's so, yeah. Wow, yeah. so the, the I, I, expressions, I heard, I heard, yeah, very interesting. Um, yeah, so, have you, I got a question for Fred Bland, have you done chi sao or arm contact training with? Haka practitioners or others who practice bridge training as well. Any perceptions from that? I don't know if I've, I've done training with Haka guys before. I've, I've met a few mm. people that have come around here that have different backgrounds and different yeah. backgrounds um, outside of the Ip Man family. Um, but no, I couldn't say that I, I've specifically gone out to source um, yeah. Haka guys. Although it's a bit yeah. of a uh, I'm not going to say a trend at the moment. Well, you mean just in the Wing Chun world, or is that just? Mm. I think just just in your own personal experiences, have you you know have you have you met any other yeah. any bridge any other bridge training arts and 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 had any any learnings or percentage from it? So no, we've had, we've had, we've met many martial arts, but it all tends to be a um, sort of event sort of thing. Yeah. So you don't get the you don't get the chance really to even interact. Yeah. And, uh, well, the ding dong, if that makes yeah. sense. So, yeah, yeah, we've had small exchanges cool so um i think it's a good time to to look at some photos how does that sound mm. sounds great to me yeah right. okay that's cool. let me share my screen and while you're sorting the screen we'll have a bit of a delay on the screen you've got you've got to describe what the photo is that comes up <laughs> yeah because we can't see it and Okay, so we've got a, a picture of uh, you and Barry with uh, Sifu Joseph. He's holding up a. a oh, he's got the knives. Yeah. yeah, got the knives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well that was um, an event that we put on um, with in conjunction with our, our European friends. Yeah. Um, they came over, we did a seminar, and our Sifu, who very rarely comes out to anyone's, uh, especially yeah. his students, seminars came out to our event. And uh, yeah, I uh, actually had the knives on the floor. I've got them up on the on the wall. They sit with him all the time. But um, the story behind the knives is that I, I just had them down on the floor as a, as, yeah. a, as a little bit of a photographic decoration. And the moment he see it, he knew straight away. He just went over there laughing. Oh, hey, Spencer, you've done it. You've done it. Because like, he he used to like rope tying. Um, yeah. And show different ways of tying in right. the knives yeah. into rattan rings and oh, stuff. Wow. So he, that's why he's standing there and he, he just grabbed them up and goes, I'll have them there, yeah, you can take a photo of these. And it was so mm -hmm. it was a magical day. Um yeah. like Barry said, yeah. he, he never come out before. So um not to visit students in that sense. Very really. really. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice to do that. We had actually done the after that we ended up doing a Chinese New Year yeah. Yeah. sort of event with him in Chinatown, which was, was so yeah, that's, that one. So that's actually um, a seminar where we had uh, it was sort of Maria Gross, yeah. um, Perry yeah. and Smoke, Perry and Yuri Fleischmann that were over from Austria and Germany, and they came over for the weekend and just it was our first event really to try to see if we could draw a crowd, but we weren't really that well known then, so it was a nice little private event. 
Uh, and and this, uh, this, the, this poster is the same one you have behind you, right? Chun Brothers, it's one. one yeah. yeah, Chun Brothers, yeah. yeah. It's an idea we had back in the day. That, the actual Chun there that's written, um, this was a design actually by our country brother, Alex. So yeah, he was in Cyprus. Cyprus. he helped us all the time with these sort of things. He lives in Cyprus. Um, but the, the, the Chun character was uh, written by these things. So we, we kind of moulded the, the, the thing oh. around it. And we decided yeah. on the, the Chun brothers because that's me and Barry. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we stayed together after we left Sifu. Um, and very rarely do you find two Kung Fu brothers that we put up with each other for so long. <laughs> Or just be around each other again. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of our new way of trying to promote one day, one family, which meant it didn't matter what, what background of Winton you come from, you come along to that event. Yeah, and family. you can see the picture how proud uh, Sifu is, you can see in his face. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a good, the mad yeah. day, mad day. Um, a picture of a, a DVD, Junmo Wing Chun Martial Association. Oh, this is on by sea time, wasn't it? Was that the, the oh, video? Yeah. Yeah, was performance performance banquet, nineteen ninety. Yeah, banquet. That was a uh, sort of unof unofficial, official sort of yeah. uh, basic My ceremony. Uh, yeah, where he just all all his elders and yeah. And so we, we produced the video. Yeah, I was I was the I was a video photographer back in yeah. the day. So I actually started when I first started with Sifu as well, and oh, I right, okay. with my cameras doing photographs and stuff like that, and. Uh, so that was a banquet that was initially done. That was on March the second, nineteen ninety-seven. That was done in uh, New World Restaurant. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, familiar with um, uh, Master Pang and uh, all the guys then. Um, and literally, it was the first time I think we had demonstrated publicly. Probably, yeah. um, I was thrown in the front because I was the OP. I was a talker, as you might imagine. Yeah. <laughs> So sit for free of the microphone, you know, you can introduce yeah. everyone. I'm there having to introduce everybody in it. And um, he done a bit of the introduction, sorry. Yeah. Oh, come, come, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> he done a bit of the introduction. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was the first time we really demonstrated and Sifu invited all of his country brothers, um, even um, representative from Ip Chun, Samuel Kok and everyone come over to yeah. that event as well. Um, and it was just his way of showing everybody who we were. So it's the closest thing to a basie that, wow. that he wanted to do because it's a public one rather than the private bases. You know, I, I, I don't even want to tell you how many times I've made him a cup of tea. So if, if it's all about <laughs> making a super cup of tea, I, I've basically done. <laughs> <a million time. laughs> <laughs> so very, very short. Yeah, we, we we were kind of unaware at the time. I think yeah. we were just going through the motions. It was an event we got long time and afterwards, he told us uh, that was your initiation. Sort of thing. And is this the uh, the original um, uh, logo that you've got the, the dummy? Yes, the, the original Jan yeah, logo. Yeah. yeah. So that's the dummy. And and is there any particular? The there, yeah, the dummy and knives are there. We, uh, the dummy in actually his logo. There's a story behind there. He developed his logo. Flower. Um, he develops a plum flower around the outside. That's the character Jan from Jan Mo. Yep. But mm -hmm. he's replaced the left hand side with the wooden man um, and replaced the, the, the cross signature within the Jun character with the blade. Oh. Um, and it's representing of his special uh, area of trade, mm -hmm. wooden man, blades. We used to cross that, then later on we've got two sticks and crossed it, so it was like a mountain on the top. Yeah. Um, and then the rat and rings added the rat and rings in and it developed from that one. But that was oh, one of the first official. I produced all of all of the, the cover and the the inside cover was interesting because it gives you the notes and everything that was demonstrated on the day. Including, oh, wow. uh, demonstrated on the day, um, yeah. regardless of Kung Fu Uncle, Joseph yeah. Lee Joseph demonstrated Lee. on the day, yeah. and some of his students demonstrated on the day as well. So. That'd be great so to see one day. I'd love to see that one day. That'd be great. Yeah, so would we. It's, a, it's, a, it's on VHS video tapes. So if he's got a VHS player anywhere, man, well, yeah. so. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, you should get yeah, it. It's a good convert it over. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It is a, a bit of that history. Uh, yeah. so great time, great time. Uh, so we've got another picture, and uh, uh, a lot of the students are dressed in in blue and gold. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is our little flag troop who was going to Buckingham Palace to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee. Yeah, I think that was yeah. the Queen's Golden Jubilee. Gold, Gold Jubilee. So we went down the down the what was it the Marble Lane? Yeah. 
went waving flags and then he ended up at uh, Buckingham Palace. That's in the side of the palace bit. You can take a picture. You can kind of see, we've done things for the Queen, I think it was twice yeah, formally, twice. we've done yeah. two things for the Queen formally. Um, wow. Mm. And it's just through Jumbo and, and the reputation that we built. We had done Carnival, remember I was saying earlier, yeah. for quite a few years. So mm. culturally and amongst the Carnival bands and stuff like that, we got quite well known. Mm. Um, but different funding streams and things that we were looking at then. If you look at the blue uniforms, they were designed and made because we opened the Millennium Dome. So the O2 Arena that we know oh, now, we was there in 1999 on New Year's wow. Eve. Yeah. Yeah, Jules Holland and all Jules of that lot. And, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and we come out with a flag troop. We had 30 people, 30 flags. Um, we had a special message yeah. in Chinese on the flags as well, wishing a thousand years of prosperity. Oh, yeah. when we thought it was going to be the end of the world, right? Y2K. Year 2000. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we was rehearsing so much before that. Yeah. Well. We didn't even know where we was. Didn't know. <laughs> and then it ended up being a big media madness yeah. of not much of the footage got shown from inside the dumps really, really, really it kind of it, it affected us big, but um, we got asked to come back and we was the we was the troop that got requested to stand in front of the wall box, box. which is really yeah. like a massive honour. Yeah. And yeah. Because of the blue and gold, I think I think there was a, a big thing there. But even at the end, there's a little story there where we all got asked to stand up against the curtain to take our photograph by a big security group. Mm -hmm. What do we want to take a photograph now for? And everyone's on the running home and stuff. And as, as there's got us all standing there for these photographs, I looked behind and I could see the Queen and the Prime Minister, everyone literally two yards behind the curtain behind me going. <laughs> so we was used as this full shield to uh, <laughs> stop anybody going through that curtain <laughs> so the Queen and the Prime Minister could get out of the dome. Yeah. Yeah, believe it. Um, yeah, that, that's the story behind all that. And if you look closely at the Jumbo flag at the front there, you can start seeing with all the. Oh, yeah, the two sticks. The yeah. sticks going yeah. 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 And, go by anyway. and they're the colours of the elements. So you've got the white band on the gold, you've got yeah. the green, the black, the yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's the colours of the elements on that flag. Right, let's move across. Oh, this, I think you're. Are you in China? Did you go to China here? Uh, I think. Yeah, it's probably really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 went to the Yitman Tongs. <laughs> Uh, opening, yeah, because I think that was 2002, and that was the reason we gave you guys that photo because there was a transition point for us, yeah. Um, when we decided yeah. that it, it's time now for us to do something, and um, yeah. it was from that trip in China that we yeah. see we was the only representatives of the Lee Singh family there. Um, we was actually there was very few people dressed in red, yeah. funnily enough. That, and that's actually in Fatsan, that's the Fatsan Memorial oh. Park. Mm. Um, and that's mm. where the Ip Man Tong, the Ip Man Tong initially opened there yeah. Yeah. and it had its own little yeah. tom, uh, little hall museum. Um, yeah. But yeah. since then, now they've moved that into what used to be the Wong Fei Hong Museum. Because yeah. the Wong Fei Hong Museum sat in the middle of that park. Yeah. Um, and now it's kind of a shared thing between the Ip Man. Um, was that, was your representation of, of Lee Shim known? Did they did they know who who he was or no? We just went there with with, with the Sifu Simoy. Yeah, yeah, we Simoy. went we went yeah. with um, Sifu's wife Simoy and, yeah, and some of his yeah. daughters. Yeah, so um, we he wasn't. We didn't demonstrate. There was a lot of guys from London that we yeah. knew that we see yeah. there, yeah. Um, and and they were up demonstrating on the stage. We didn't do anything like that, but we was taken in, and it made his day because it was too long. You mentioned. T Long mm. earlier on. Yeah. Um, he was one yeah. of the Hong Kong film stars, if you know this different character. Yeah. And um, he see us. Um, and he crossed the road in fact so, yeah. to come and say hello because you're Lee Singh people. Why know Lee Singh? Because he was friendly with my he if it was Jill one. Mm. So um, they invited us into their group. So while everybody's doing their thing, we're yeah. there sitting around all these local boys in Fatsan that were all proper sort of you know, they couldn't speak a word of English, and they were right. hard dudes. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're just sitting there, like, oh, how are you going, how are you going? And, and Simo and, and that, they could talk to all of these guys. So it made it a very different sort of experience for us. Wow. Uh, yeah. We felt more, actually, we, we were drawn in more by them guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it Chin come and said hello, and obviously oh, yeah. we, I met them for the first time, some will come here, come over to see us. And, uh, so it's really good, really good time. Cool. Mm -hmm. By the time we come back from there, we had decided on a, on a big drink tonight, we've got to do something, man. What we're going to do, we'll have, our own, we'll have a chat with when we get back, and uh, that's when it all started to, to make the changes. 
I think we've got a picture. I think it's a martial arts show. Um, oh, oh right, yeah. yeah, there's a chain. That, that is actually, I think, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's the yeah. 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 Oh, That's oh, the guy. That's the Yum Young Academy troop. Um, right. The guys that demonstrated that team. So that photo is actually 2012. I think that is 2012. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but the idea of it was that that was when we come back from Hong Kong. We started the Young Young Academy, yeah, so yeah. Um, okay. and most of these guys were with us there from 2003, I suppose, onwards yeah. to 2008, 2009. Then they we carried on training around here after this was built, and we actually prepared rehearsals. Um, yeah, actually, where we done yeah. the Chung Brothers seminar with Seafood, the other photo you had there, we actually done all our rehearsals in that same hall for that event, yeah. Yeah. and in this room as well. Yeah. So they're all country brothers. Um, and she was one of them there's me, me, me cousin and student. And then we've got a couple of Kung Fu brothers there. And all of us had actually trained and met with Sifu Joe. Some of them there are our, our close Kung Fu brothers from back in the day. Um, mm. And they'll kind of come together to help us do it. The idea of the academy is that troop thing. We, we kind of go to guys that we come back in, we polish up our things, and then we go out and we demonstrate. So um, it's not a school as such, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's a troop. A troop of people. We've got a, a big photo with uh, Sifu Joseph, and there's a lot of people. Yeah, like, yeah this one's the whole Lee Sing oh, family. This is um, um, seminar, this was. This, this was, yeah. Joe, Joe Lee, Austin, and Arsif Joseph, when they all did a big seminar. On behalf of oh, Sunday. yeah, that's Austin. Uh, yeah. That's Austin going there. Yeah. Austin yeah. Gardner, yeah. standing in the middle in the black yeah. t-shirt is yeah. Austin Gardner. He's yeah. number one man there, so it's either. Standing next to him, who's the, the head man of the family over in um, Switzerland. Okay. And then you've got Joseph Lewis sitting, standing next to him as well. You've got Barry sitting down there, and I'm standing on the right hand side oh, in an yeah. orange t shirt. And um, yeah. I think what you've got to take from these sort of things, there's a lot of Sifu's family there at the, at the, at the front. Yeah. Um, and all John Mo students um, that were currently with Sifu, we had already left at this time. So this was one of the first events we managed with um, one of. It was Austin Go students because um, it was in the place where Austin done um, teaching in the university, University College London. Yeah, Austin like London Bridge, um, Daniel London Bridge. Yeah. Uh, it was the only time, unfortunately, it was the only time we managed to get everybody in the same group at the same time. So um, the last ever uh, one, yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Important to do though, right? I mean, it's a, such a. Uh, oh yeah. At yeah. the time, it was it was brilliant. Yeah. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, and we're still in contact with a lot of these guys now as well. Um, but it's, it's all good. All good. Uh, but just goes to show, small family in comparison to others in Wing Chun, especially when you're looking across the world and stuff like that. People have got thousands and thousands. Of we're a very, very small family, but um, yeah, very proud family at the end of that. Thing. And a lot of the guys there have been going on many moons as well. Uh, got a picture. I think it might be another uh, in Austria. Yeah. Yeah, that's us in yeah in Austria. We when I did the seminar. Um, this is is it Austria? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's in Austria. He's actually in Graz in Austria. That's right. He's got two halls, and this is one of the halls uh, that we christened it actually. Yeah, this is why he's this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we were the first people to teach anything in that specific hall at that time. I think um, Perry, um, the, the Perry and Yuri are uh, Perry's the guy in the grey, grey. grey um, and Yuri is in the black, and they're both some of the highest um, qualified Hakido masters in the world yeah. from the, um, the Ji Yang J, so it's Simu Hakido. Um, that's their main art, and then they learn Wing Chun from Sip Wastin Go and Ziegler. Um, and they do other things like um, they're into security, so they're doing a lot of close protection work and stuff cool. like that. But these are full time martial artists, so it's just um. Them too, actually, it was uh, Yuri that contacted us through Facebook and he mm. come out. They both flew over here specifically to meet us because we were the same family, but we were doing things that they could kind of recognize. So mm. it's a great event. It's a great event. Uh, I'm just, excuse me a second. Just gonna, just gonna let, we've got a cat in the room. We've got a cat in the room and. Um, oh, this, this does something dodgy. And I yeah. think this one, this one I, I think it looks like, it looks like Chinatown. Um, and I can see both right. you and Spencer there with uh, Seafood Joseph in the middle. Yeah, so in, in the background of that picture is the Canton restaurant. That's where Lee Singh used to uh, run his restaurant. And that's where the Wing Chun Kong was. 
Oh, this is this one. Oh, no, oh, not this one. That's the one. Ah, then, oh, yeah. This one is... This was his last Yeah, time. this was the last time we, we went on an out in the seafood in 2016. Um, and one of the main things I love about that photo is that pagoda. Yeah, mm. yeah the pagoda there is... Um, that's gone now. That was yeah. demolished in yeah. like 24 oh, wow. hours. No, because it's so crazy. <laughs> but that was the same pagoda. That sits directly opposite, to the right of that photograph. If it's you go to the right, right is the Canton restaurant. Um, and that's where Seafood first done his Wing Chun demonstration with Lee Sing in Chinese wow. New Year. Um, so he was making a move to sort of see what... Tumkil Pool, was it? Yeah, Tumkil Pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was making a move to see if he could get back involved with Chinatown in their Chinese New Year. So this was a... I think this was the Mid-Autumn Festival. Yeah, Mid-Autumn. 2016. Um, so we just go... We always used to go along to support and stay in touch with him and stuff like that as well. So... And he's got some of his family here and some of his other students around as well at the time. But um, always uh, he's here, he's got his blue and yellow from the Millennium Dome. He's still yeah. got that jacket on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's seen odd years later. Yeah. So yeah, character, character. Okay. So we're, we're coming up to that uh, two hour mark. Um, oh, wow. okay. it's, gone, it's gone so quickly. It's gone so quickly. Yeah, it's an ass. it has. It has, isn't it? Got any other questions uh, on the group before we kind of wrap up Al. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm I'm like just oh. a bit out of sorts with me when the internet drops. So I think my phone's about to die. But um I mean I've got loads more questions to be honest, but uh it'll be for another time. Yeah. Uh we've got right. there's, there's there's one that's come up. There is there are some Wing Chun branches that have elements this is from Mark Roberts that have elements of Hakka arts like madness. Have any of you ever seen any of these branches? Um, I wouldn't, I'll, to be honest, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because if, if I've seen many videos and things like that out on, on the YouTube and we've seen a few guys, but yeah, to specifically come from a Hakka background, um, it'd be well, nice to see. So. I think I've seen your Sifu's stuff a little bit mm. uh, back in the day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's like, that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lovely, lovely. I like Steve Worcester's uh, question. The last one he's got there, he's talking about demonstrated. He see us demonstrate a few years back and we climbed oh, yeah, up I see it now. and stood on top of the wooden bar. Uh, yeah. That's was right. there an application to this move or was yeah. it just theatrical? Well, I'll tell you something, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> if you think it's theatrical, then I'd love right. to see anyone try and do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit of both, I mm. think, but. Um, lion dancers, if you're a lion dancer, um, you would be aware of what Muay Thai Jong is, right? Muay Thai Jong is the Hong Fao post that you get up yeah. on your lion yeah. dance on. Yeah. Um, we had this practice where we would, that's how we practice our single single leg ceiling dance, is that we mm. manage to leap up. You, there's a certain uh, game, uh, Hei Gong, if you like, there's a yeah. certain energy training to lift, you. To lift up and, and jump and fly. Um, and that was one of Sifu's special things he liked to show. So it is a technique. There's something in it. There's a there's a moves and, and there's a, a mentality and a, quite a lot of training behind it. Um, and the idea is to be able to just jump up using the leg, the arms. So that's three steps before you get onto the top of the wooden man, um, and then you practice your single leg tail. So, but wow. when someone's got the wooden dummy, yeah. Well, if, <laughs> when someone then goes on a wooden dummy and, and starts going, it's it's quite an horrific thing. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, again, when you're doing your silver and up there, the spatial awareness stuff changes, your energy and your air, your hey gong, if you ain't got that sorted out, you're going to just fall off. Mm. Um, and some people would say the further you can feel your hey sink. Mm. So if I can actually have my feet on the top of that wooden man and I can still feel the earth, yeah. I still feel like I'm rooting it, um, that's how far we could digging ourselves in the ground. <laughs> yeah. It's very strange. It's a stronger, yeah, it's, um, stronger connection, doesn't it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a yeah, definitely, definitely. But it was more of, um, at that time, I think it was something that was a special thing. Yeah. He yeah. just wanted to put it out because we had trained that for quite a while. But again, most other winter schools have never seen them do this. So yeah. yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, so it is, yeah. Never one heard one of either. Yeah. <laughs> one, one final question for, for each of you. Uh, yeah. If you could go back, uh, what advice would you give yourself on on your training and your journey? Uh, well, in the day, maybe 
I suppose is to just um, do more of the same. <laughs> really, I think uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to answer because early days you've got a lot of energy to burn. Yeah. yeah. So you need to you need to use that energy up uh, to settle down what you're going to be. So I, I think it's really just just, just doing more. Yeah. Just do more as, as you can, gain as much as you can. So I think knowledge comes later, not early. Early, you need to experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I could say that. I could say like, I'd love to go back, and I wish I'd done the Wing Chun when I'd done the Karate and started at that point. But even now, when I go back into my mindset of the Shotokan and see some of the higher level players that I've known over the years doing that sort of stuff, and and the the, the actual agility that he gave. Me and the, and the sort of the, the, the foundation of martial arts, if you like, it gave me was used by our Sifu to, to train the pole work and, and things like that. So, the only thing I, I there's no regrets, if you know, I mean, it was very, very, it all felt very destiny type led. It felt like it's like our Sifu said, you never, you, never, you never waste what you've learned, mm. you would bring it with you and you add to it. That's true. Yeah. yeah, there's no going back, is there? You just got to make it go forward. But everything you do is good. What you've yeah. done before is not a waste. It just needs to be refined. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're at just over two hours. Uh, that went really quickly. Thank you so much. Thanks for the audience. Yeah. 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 We got two for the price of one. You can't go wrong. Yeah. 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 Thank you for doing yeah. it for us as well, gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Nice one, guys. True pleasure. Thank you. True pleasure. Man. True pleasure yeah. Most welcome. Yeah. Hope to see you on the circuit around soon. Yeah. 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 Definitely have to try to um, hook up at some point. You're not too far from us. Good. Right. No worries. All right. Nice. Take care then.